welcome to Shredded Cells episode 37. I'm your host, Alex Schmitz, and with me here today is Kenneth McNulty. Communicate first, smash after! <laughs> Jorge Samson. When you're scared, all the more reason to move forward. Peter Frank. Fire, fire, fire! <laughs> Mark Goldsmith. Throw logic to the curb. That's the way Team Gurren rolls. Ching! <laughs> and I'll finish it off with a giga a drill breaker! <laughs> to go, in case you couldn't tell by the title and all those quotes, we are going to be talking about awesome the, mag- <laughs> <laughs> I wish. the magnificent series of movies, uh, Tengen Topa, Gurren Lagann, Childhood's End, and The Lights in the Skies Are Stars. Uh, for those of you who are a little bit confused about, like, well, what the hell's going on right now, you'd be interested to hear that we are part of TechEds, which is part of ABW Productions, a media production organization here at Ohio University. We are at TechEds, do all sorts of cool things with movies, video games, music, anime. You know, we got a blog, we got an iTunes page, you know, YouTube, all sorts of cool stuff. Basically, we have all your needs. Uh, pretty much. You know, you need any sort of entertainment talk or video, you know, we can provide it for you. Just it. ask. <laughs> exactly. Anything not on that list just isn't important. Obviously yep. not. We all deal with that. Uh-huh. And uh, for those of you who've been listening to us for a while, you might be interested to hear our two new voices on the podcast, Jorge Sampson, who is a fellow film student of mine, actually a graduate student, and uh, Peter Frank, who's a new member of TechEd's, friend of Andrew Gleason, longtime Shred Cells member. <laughs> it's true. It's like your subtitle, you know. Many argue show. that I'm just the better looking version of him. Oh. Ooh. I'd say you're better. Don't tell him I said that. <laughs> oh, my. <laughs> JK Walls. Let's we'll we'll see if he anyone. listens to this podcast or not. Yeah. So, Jorge and Peter, real quick, just tell us a little bit about who you are and how you got into anime in the first place. Okay, I guess I'll uh, kickstart uh, the initi- initiation process. Um, I got into anime in general when I was like 18. Uh, it was one of the reasons I actually ended up going to Japan. I lived there for uh, five years. Just, uh, you know, quick. <laughs> quick touch, little touch and go. <laughs> yeah. I did my undergrad there. And um, actually, when I first saw Gurren Lagann, I was really amazed by how awesome it was. Well, of course. How could you not be amazed? I mean, seriously, it was like, holy shit. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> just shit. amazed. What, what, just, what was the what was the show that actually got you into anime, like in the first place? You're gonna hate me for saying this, but it was Eva Evangelion. Evangelion. Yes, <laughs> best anime. Come on, boosh. At the moment, I have not seen yeah. that movie and yeah. that anime series, and I feel it's a very quite good series. Inadequate. Yeah, yeah. Inadequate. I don't. Uh, it's. I was ranting about this on Tumblr the other day because I've been doing this 30 day anime challenge thing, and like one of the You're things one of those was people. I am one of <laughs> one of the questions was character that like annoys you and gets on oh, your yeah. nerves. Oh, yeah. and for Shinji? Me, it was Shinji. Because three Shinji, women. If it wasn't for Shinji, I could actually naked. probably <laughs> like the show a lot because it has a lot of other cool elements. But Shinji is just so. They fix it in the movie a bit. No, he doesn't. No, he's well, terrible. They, in the no, m- like they do a redo thing where he's not quite okay. as bad. You mean sorry? You mean the rebuild film? Yeah, I sorry. That's what I meant to say. No, not those ones. End no. of Ava. No, he's no, no, worse. no. <laughs> no, he's a lot worse. Yeah, they do fix his character well, a bit, a little bit. Because in 2.0, he actually starts fighting for something near the end, which I liked a lot actually. But I've heard 3.0 is pretty bad, so it sounds like they're not going. I haven't with seen that. it yet. Is anyone here a fan of Saint Seiya? I've heard of it, but I've never watched it. It's an older yeah. like. Because if I were show. to be. Uh, really like to the core of when I started watching anime that would be the answer like when I was very very like elementary school gotcha uh, very bloody anime yeah that, I've seen clips of it it looks pretty epic in its own right it is yeah all right and Peter what about you uh my introduction to anime would probably be somewhere between Yu Yu Hakusho the ever yes. fantastic Pokemon and Yu-Gi-Oh it's worth noting that I was yes. so young at the time that I I think I have intentionally blocked all of them out of my mind in terms of details. But yeah, that's probably what softened me up to the blade that is anime. <laughs> <laughs> nice. And uh, what's like your major and year here? I am a sophomore wildlife biology major. Gotcha. So nice. I am the one that makes no sense here. Wow. That's pretty cool, though. I like it. It's fresh. Yeah, it's fine. You yeah. know, we, we get a nice variety of people. You know, Jeremy is a chemical engineering major. I'm a pyro. You know? <laughs> yeah, poor, I prefer poor, demo hey, person. Professional pyro you over sure here. Sure, you're not a spy. I try not to be. Yeah. Well, he's from Paraguay, so you yeah, never yeah. know. Exactly. You know. Yeah. Ooh. <laughs> here to report us to someone. Oh yeah. All right. Well, 
those of you who have listened to us for a long time might know that, hey, wait, you guys did a Gurren Lagann episode like way back in the day. It was actually our second episode that we ever did. Ever. <laughs> but that was you know quite a long time ago, and I think we've improved our skills since then. So we're going to be talking about Gurren Lagann, the show, but more importantly, the two movies. Uh, mm-hmm. Like I said earlier, The ch- Childhoods and... and um, uh, the lights in the sky are stars. Also, I believe they're both called like Gurren Hen and Lagan Hen in like Japanese. Like I've heard them referred That's to quite in accurate, that way. Yeah. What what is the hen? Hen means like an addition or a version of something. Oh, okay. Well, there you go. See, we actually have Jorge who actually speaks Japanese, so he can you know, give us Do these little tidbits. <clears throat> you know, incidentally you know, could... enough, Childhood's End is one of the best sci-fi books ever written in the golden age of sci-fi. It's a good book. Is it really? Who is yeah. it written by? Uh, Isaac, not Isaac Asimov. It was by um, Arthur C. Clarke. Oh, oh my god. Man, you're I so smart, Kenny. She's I love that dark. book. <laughs> my friend just gave it to me. He's like, read it. And I'm like, does this have any tie It doesn't, but it's a very good book. <laughs> it's a very good book. Good. Well, I was figuring before we start talking about the movies, maybe we could go real quick around and give everyone's uh, both experience with the show and thoughts on it in general, because I know Kenny, for example, has not seen the entirety of the Gurren Lagann TV show, but Nappy only monster. part of it. You know. I think everybody else has seen all of it but me. I think we can pretty much assume that. I think mm-hmm. so, yeah. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Mark, what's your experience and opinions on the TV show? Um, the TV show, I saw all of it, um, and it's still my favorite anime of all time. <laughs> um, everyone, most people who know me know that uh, One Piece is, like, my favorite thing, but as far as, like, a finished, completed anime goes, Gurren Lagann is my favorite. Um, I think partially just because of what it teaches. I mean, like just the morals and ideals it holds within the anime is amazing. And the, the movie does just as good of a job portraying that and even taking it like a step further. Um, so, or a couple steps further. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so I, I really liked it. I liked the anime. Um, even if you've seen the movies, I really suggest seeing the anime. But mm-hmm. uh, I Definitely. do truly believe that with watching the movie, you get the gist and the feel that you were supposed to get in the anime. So mm-hmm. both are good. Uh, Peter, how about you? Uh, I was actually brought into it through the satire version, uh, which is basically an abridged series that uh, my friends forced me to watch. Yes, I did not, if, in fact, want to watch it. It sounded cheesy and unnecessary to me at first. <gasps> Blasphemy. Gasp. And then I watched it, and I thought it was kind of funny, so I watched the real show, and then I was changed for all times. There you go. <laughs> Pretty much. I mean, if you get into Gurren Lagann, it will change you. There's no question. Uh, Jorge, how about you? Well, um... The series was, as I said, um, very, very, uh, um, yeah, it was like a great thing after watching things that were kind of dark. I mean, one of my animes that... Well, you said I, you like Ava a lot. That's Ava, really dark. And Ergo Proxy. <laughs> I don't know if anyone knows about that. Well, I know Ergo Proxy. Yeah. And it's, and then um, Experiment oh, uh, oh. Lane, Lane. Oh, you've seen Lane? Yeah, yeah. yeah Lane, oh, yeah. Lane is weird. <laughs> very Lane is weird. so dark, man. So after all that, I started watching Green Lagan. And I would um, agree with Mark on the feeling that, you know, the whole series, the whole uh, spiral energy concept, it's all about how much you want to do something. It's all about the willpower and how do you lift yourself up from being in a dark place. Mm -hmm. And the Mm -hmm. characters were just that way. Yep, that's pretty much true. Uh, Kenny, how about you? The thing I see, I only watch like eight episodes because you're like, get eight episodes, get eight. Oh, God, my language broke. <laughs> get eight episodes in to see what happens. So I got there and, you know, tragic yeah. thing happens. Why, why did you stop? I don't yeah. know, I like I'll pick it up tomorrow and didn't. <laughs> that happens a lot. Dude, Legend of Zelda, I didn't beat it for six years. But, anyways. What, the original? Yeah. Oh, I still it have pretty the rough. NAS. But, one. anyways, <clears throat> um, so that whole thing happened. But watching the movie, see what I like about it, about the whole series is. Instead of just knocking your socks off, what it does is it politely like folds your socks to the side, then punches you in the mouth because it gets you ready <laughs> yeah. for something epic and just takes it over that <laughs> top. And yeah. it's the one series I think I felt literally empowered to go fight a bear afterwards. Like I can yeah, literally yeah, do yeah. anything I want. So I'm gonna watch yeah. the show. I can't tell you why I didn't finish it, but every character and that's an anime I don't think I've laughed harder at. Like that anime is just my beautiful. My favorite thing about us watching. Uh, these movies together was Kenny's reaction to just yeah. everything. Cause whenever something <laughs> was taken up one more notch, Kenny was literally screaming at the TV. I See, believe yeah. by the end you were standing and jumping. I was, <laughs> ambient. I was I so jealous of that man. It could go any experience. further. Cause the thing is, I, I think I broke a lot of sound complaints that night or at least rules, but still <laughs> oh, yeah. I didn't think I was like, Oh, it's gotta be done. Mark's like, just, just keep going. And after it was its biggest thing, Mark's like, don't worry, we've got one more step it's to go. I, my body couldn't handle that. <laughs> yeah. Well, the, so. for the listeners out there, like the second week of school, uh, we got together because I own both the movies because you can buy them both on a 
in HD off of iTunes, and we Marvelous. watched them together like in a four-hour marathon. And to Kenny, who hadn't seen it, we kept on saying, don't worry, it gets better. And we kept on telling him, like, you know, even when they got to the point where he combines and forms the Ark Gurren Lagann, you know, and he's punching the Mugan through a hole in space and time, it's like, no, it gets better. <laughs> you know, and then we get to, like, you know, it turns into this, the Galaxy Gurren Lagann, it's like, no, it gets better. And then it turns into the Tengen Topa Gurren Lagann, it's like, no, it gets better. The fact that it went above that point is what really <laughs> surprised me like i couldn't even hang well because that. that didn't happen in the show that was yeah, the thing they yes. added for the movie just to make it, <laughs> it was even so better. epic it always gets bigger he was it's celestial just energy the tagline Very or phallic. better this is not my oh, final don't form worry. it gets bigger <laughs> it's not my final form yet pretty That's much <laughs> all right and as for myself um Obviously, I've seen the entire TV show. Uh, I was just talking about Hore about this earlier. I've made a list of like my top favorite anime, and Gurren Lagann sits nicely at number five. There's a few anime I like more mm-hmm. just because they have a better story than Gurren Lagann. Well, but as far as just pure inspiration, like energy, mm-hmm. there's nothing yeah, to compete yeah. with it. Like if you just want a pure action That's show, true. True. go with Gurren Lagann. Like nothing, yeah. nothing's better than that. It kills the opinion. blues, man. If you feel sad or something, just watch no, Gurren Lagann. No, no matter except I- episode eight. Yeah, yeah. But, but like no matter how sad you feel, if you watch some of those inspirational uh, mm. speeches and quotes, it's 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 a complete. It makes you. It's so lighthearted, <laughs> right? Mm-hmm. Okay, so I figure let's just dive into our main discussion, which will be on the two movies. And so start with the beginning of the first movie, Childhood's End. And have any Good of book. you guys seen the um um? The, the Parallel Works videos that they've put out? Some of them. No, I've seen, I haven't. So you've seen some. I've seen the background of Logon, where they have him combining with various other robots, but I haven't seen anything else. Okay. For those who don't know, they're Gynax, I don't know when they did this. must have been after the TV show, but at least these series called Parallel Works, where they basically just made music videos with Gurren Lagann and like some of them were directly late, related to the show and others were like like one was Kamina, Simone and Yoko and like everyone in a fantasy setting and they just score them to music so like take a track from the show and just make this like short animation with mm-hmm. it and there's probably by far the best one in my opinion is I think it's number eight which was that uh, opening sequence from Childhood's End that showed Lord Genome's past pretty much you know with him oh, like cool. you know being the, the earth being attacked by the anti spirals and him going out and you know fighting them and then falling into despair because of the spiral nemesis and betraying all of his friends and all that mm-hmm. like and seeing that I'm glad they put that into the movie because you don't get it at all when you're watching it if you don't know anything about the series mm-hmm. but you know it all comes to uh, a head later on when you learn the truth about the spiral king mm-hmm. which is personally something as as I've rewatched the series like over and over again the spiral king is by far the, like the most interesting character on rewatch because oh, you yeah. get his motivation for everything he's doing uh, that you didn't understand the first time. Mm-hmm. And you change your perspective on him. Like right now, when you're just saying that about his story, I feel so different about this guy. Oh, mm-hmm. yeah. Well, like um, I remember the first time I was watching the show when he, when they're fighting him in Teplin, he says, there was once a man like you who fought as you do. He's like, what does that mean? And like, it doesn't matter or something like that. At first I was talking, he was talking about like, Kamina's dad or like some like mm-hmm. Simone's one of Simone's himself. relatives or something like that but the fact that he's talking <laughs> about himself it's like oh mm-hmm. that's cool and mm-hmm. the fact he got like drilled through by Simone was kind of epic too well, of I- I'm gonna be honest very much well so. that's what you said right if if there's a wall on my way I'll just drill through it <laughs> that's the way it works yeah. I think that's the even if that, that wall from. is people <laughs> yeah <laughs> even oh, if it's people. flesh <laughs> see one of my favorite moments with Lord Genome was during my second watch through when I just stopped and thought you know every single one of those chests contains a little girl oh yeah (laughs) yeah, and that's when i realized that he even if he does get some level of redemption in my eyes towards the end he's still not the best person the the, the reason for that is because basically they described it as like he just went crazy with power so Mm -hmm. at first while he did all that all that stuff with putting the humans down make them go underground while he did that for the right reason quote unquote Mm-hmm. Uh, after that, when he goes crazy with power, that's when he just takes it over the top. Yeah, well, the way I see it, like, he just fell into such a huge despair after learning about the spiral nemesis and, you know, like, that the anti-spirals were so too powerful to beat. You know, he just subjug- subjugates humanity and then just sort of, like, you know, they what do they call it? He calls it his thousand-year doldrum, you know, where mm-hmm. basically he's just, like, chillaxing there in his throne for <laughs> yeah. a thousand years. You have to give him points. He protected the Earth for a thousand years. He did. Yeah. Well, I mean, kept the guys from not coming. Which is something I love in the that little 
uh, in the little thing of his past, you see that he has a pet armadillo, mm-hmm. you know, and you don't think anything of it, but it's like, oh, that's Guam, you know, like just being around the Spiral King long enough gave him sentience pretty much. Wait. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You didn't get that? Nope. Yeah. He's just if like you look, Buta. Yeah. He's got a little armadillo with him when he's a little kid in that flashback, and that, that's Guam later. Is also Guam's there as, as he's an adult. No, Guam is the armadillo of the four generals. Oh, oh, that. Oh, yeah, yeah I knew that. Sorry, I totally misinterpreted what you said. <laughs> well, yeah, what I did knew you that. Think I was talking about. I, for some reason, I thought you were talking about the little fuzzy thing. It's always with them. Buta? Oh, Buta? That's Buta. Yeah. I don't know why I thought that, but no. I, he got spiral <laughs> energy. He still got well, something right. around Seaman. Yeah, there's a comparison. So he's to become be a general later on. Well, yeah. you haven't seen the TV show. What happens with him in the TV show? Which I'm kind of glad they skipped over in the movie. <laughs> right, same here. It was kind of. Is he his own province or something? Uh, you'll see. I don't want to spoil it for All you. All right. Yeah. Well, I have something to look forward to now. I'm a little you horrified. Do. Yeah, you have a lot to look forward but to. I will say. It, Obviously, throughout all these movies, they have to cut a lot of time because the TV show is 27 episodes and they're trying to get into two movies. But they do a good job of it. Like in the first episode, you know, it, whereas in the TV show, they had that earthquake, you know, and then nothing happened for a little while. And then the big monster, the mm-hmm. gunman, fell through the roof. They just make it so the earthquake happens and then the gunman falls and they just sort of quicken things up, which mm-hmm. I really liked. You know, it gets it gets everything across more effectively, you know, like... And then when they when they come to the surface, at the in the first episode of the show, there's like two gunmen standing there, and they're like you know being all evil, like oh no, we're gonna get attacked. And then in the movie, they just cut right to all the um, Dayaka and all the other people like attacking it and blowing it up. And it's just like you know they just speed things up, which is smart. I like Dayaka a lot. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. He has the best wife. He do- no, yes, literally. He, does. he even says it. So yes, I mean, he does. Honey, can I go to the ultimate death battle? Of course. Yeah. yeah. I have the best wife. Yeah. Just get back home before 12. <laughs> like, yeah. okay. Probably the only thing that uh, I really didn't like that they did with the movie was um, they really skip over a lot of the character development with uh, Yoko, mm-hmm. with mm-hmm. Um, Keaton. With Keaton yeah, could have been more and developed. with uh, Gibby and Dari and Rossiu. Yes. Yeah. So, Especially Rossiu. So a lot of the minor characters who uh, you don't get quite as attached to. Um, as you do in the TV show. Uh, yeah, yeah. You, you don't get as attached to them in the movie as you do in the TV show. But I don't know. I understand why they did it. Um, mm, but yeah. at the same time, watching the movie, uh, you still get uh, an emotion towards them. But it's not quite the same. Yeah, I yeah. agree. Yeah. Yeah, because in the in the movie, they basically, when they get to, what is it? They get through basically to where Yoko joins their crew and they're walking away. And then they do a montage to uh, Roro fight yeah. the power. Yeah. At least they montage the bad yes. scene because that's everybody's favorite episode. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I, don't, know know have that. I don't know <laughs> if it's everybody's <laughs> favorite. It's not, just him jumping sure. through the window nearly naked and then running into, oh, God, yeah, I just, yeah, that episode well, made me <laughs> laugh. I'll admit that, but. Oh, yeah. Because I actually saw that one. Eye candy. <laughs> actually, no, he was naked at one point, yeah. There's yeah. an obligatory <laughs> spa scene in most anime. There has yeah, to be. Yeah. That's kind of the thing. It's pretty much That's true. what I saw that wasn't surprised, but... Yeah, well, I always like it in, you know, in the montage where... Um, when Simon becomes a man again, and it shows like the montage of images of Kamina, they show the one of him slapping his butt. It's like, oh, yep. well, you know, that's not quite as epic as all those other ones you just yeah. showed. But it, it's an important part of Kamina because he was a very happy person, Fair. yeah, and, yeah. Ri- and ridiculous, yeah. yes, and stupid. His on forever occasion. sword. I mean, come on, can we just talk about that for a second? Because that was the best. Just like, when I saw it in the show, I'm like, is it, is it still going? Because it was just, <laughs> yeah, for <forever. funny> mural. <laughs> I loved that, which was cool. Like. Obviously, you know, it's a mech show, so of course they're not gonna have lots of mm-hmm. like ground battles. But when they yeah. did, like that fight between Viril and you know, Kamina dueling it out with oh, their yeah. swords and stuff was really cool. I'm gonna point out Viril was one of my favorite characters. Mm-hmm. I had no idea because mm-hmm. I didn't watch yep. the show enough that he would be on their side, and he was one of the most kick face characters in the thing because he really had true. a really sad at the ending, too, with the whole uh, the oh, dream God. sequences that just killed that me. That was awful. Because <laughs> come on, <laughs> that's one of the saddest moments. I, oh I knew that was it's gonna just a dream, uh, isn't it? One of our friends, uh, Clara. <laughs> uh, I looked over at her right when that happened because I knew it was going to hurt her and she was almost like in tears when she saw that. That was rough. It was really so sad. Very well, manly tears and, came from And the best part about it to be loved. the best part about it is <laughs> when you realize babies. that beast men can't reproduce because oh, they're created yeah. beings. Yeah. <laughs> so just to give you all the more feels. <laughs> Yes, yeah, so that's why it, always, it killed me seeing that because I didn't know that they were staring. So you told me at that scene, like, what's so happy about that? And you're like, you can't have babies. And I was like, no. no. Yeah. <laughs> it was so sad. Of course it was sad. Can't yeah, have did, little beast man. <laughs> <laughs> did the show have, I thought, didn't you guys say you see more of their dreams in the show? Or um, was it like the same? No, it was pretty much the same. Okay, I wasn't yeah, sure. It was basically more to the it. same. 
Was there yeah. like a whole episode devoted to it? Or because I wasn't sure if they. Actually... I mean, yeah, there's episode twenty six. I think it is. is is them at first it's the galaxy Gurren Lagann fighting and then like the second half of the episode is all them in the dream state okay okay I wasn't sure if they expanded them more because it's showing more time kind of thing no it's pretty much the same good they actually good. add some things to the dream that I like like when um when they do that pan shot when uh Simone takes all the weaves of reality and makes it into the you know the mm-hmm. drill they mm-hmm. have a l- much longer pan shot of like all the different realities and you see like Simone like in space in an astronaut suit and the one that hurts me the most is Simone in like a white coat holding up a baby you know it's like oh that's an alternate reality where he gets married and has a kid yep mm, that doesn't well, end up happening there's um what was it I can't remember his name now for some reason I forgot the guy who um Unfortunately, dies at the end in the show in the movie. The guy Keaton? who sacrifices Keaton? his life, Keaton. Yeah, because you said in the movie, Keaton was added in for that part with uh, Kamina. Right, because in the I uh, loved that part. That was good. I liked that. Yeah, because the I, we're jumping around here a bit, but whatever. In the TV show, um, there's a whole sequence like they do a, this big battle before they get drowned in the sea of despair thing, and in that, uh, the the twins, like pretty much all the minor characters, like Makin and you know all of them, die. Like a bunch of characters yeah, I knew die. There was a huge slaughter fest. And in and then in the uh, in the dream sequence in the original show, they're all there. But in the movie, it's just Kamina because or mm. th- it's just Keaton, I should say, because he's the only one who's died. And I kind of like it how they refer back to the beginning of the show where like Kamina didn't remember who he was. Mm-hmm. He's just sort of like it's really quiet for a while. It's like who are you again? And Keaton like that. yells at him. Yep. He's like, oh, of course who I didn't forget hell you. How do you think I am? Yeah, of course. <laughs> so I don't know I loved all that, and I actually. I actually kind of like the fact that they don't have all those characters die. Not so much because I care about them, because they really don't get that much development, except for the twins. The twins were the only ones amongst I that whole group guys. that I actually cared about. But in the TV show, it felt really kind of rushed, which I didn't yeah. really like. like. Like six or seven of them just die in succession. No, <laughs> yeah. uh, There was no real buildup. They just start dying, and it's kind of like, can, can you not? Please, well, like, stop. The reason I could see for that is because you're showing how stupidly powerful this enemy yeah. is. Yeah, obviously, but at the same time, I get it. After having these characters around for a while, you're like, bye, nice seeing you yeah. again. Well, it was just the fact that it literally happens in about four minutes. Like, all mm-hmm. of them start dying. So, this is a slaughter fest. <laughs> so, and it was cool then that they were able to be there for the final battle, you know, to help out. Mm-hmm. You know, and the fact that they live, because, like, what is it? I think it's Ma- is it Makin, the the bald one who's like the samurai guy. Yeah, yeah. he's mm-hmm. he's married to the engineer lady. So I, w- I was I was sad when he I was sad when he died. Also, he dies. Yeah, he dies. I knew that, but Uh-oh. still sad to hear. His <laughs> children are orphans. Spoiled. It's so sad to hear. Well, they wouldn't be orphans because the the wife yeah, w- yeah the, the wife lived, lived, but still yeah. yeah. There's a lot of like minor characters, like the people who are in the sh- like in the bridge of the uh, of the ship and everything. I have no idea what their names are. Like you know, Ricky, they- Ronald, mm-hmm. Richard. Oh, what about the missile guy? Who's the missile guy? That's Artenborough. He oh, actually has awesome. Attenborough. You actually as remember I, him, as I call him, Muppet McBeam Spam. <laughs> yep, because he does look ridiculous. And he's who you quoted: the fire, yes. fire, fire. Mm-hmm. Yep. I actually kind of like it in the. Um, remember when? Uh, in the first movie, when they're fighting against the four generals, like he tries to shoot at a Dina, and they're like, "No, stop! Nia's up there." And he shoots him, and like just a little smoke comes out. He's like, "Ah, it didn't fire." <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's just a little added moment because mm-hmm. he's so sad when his guns don't fire. He's like, <laughs> but then he gets really happy when he gets his what are they called? probability altering missiles? <laughs> yes. Wait, hold on. That's just like something from the uh, what is it? Um, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, the Infinite Probability mus- Missiles. I don't know. I haven't seen Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. What does it do? It's been uh, it, it literally goes from a probability where the missile hits the shield to a, a probability where the missile hits the ship, pretty much. So it's just anything Hats. can happen. Oops. Pretty much. So you turn like a flower pot. <laughs> well, I don't know about that, but I mean, w- with spiral energy, pretty much anything is possible. So that's the beautiful thing about the series. Yep. Pretty much. I mean,. Yeah, I mean, we've said it before. I, by the end of the series, Simon is pretty much God at this oh, yes. point. Like, he could literally do anything. I, I really like the fact, and I remember, I think it was Jeremy or someone else was complaining about this, how uh, Simone wasn't going to bring anyone back. And obviously he could if he wanted to, because he mm. is essentially God. I mean, he, he can do whatever he wants. But I think the reason why he doesn't bring anyone, and he kind of goes into this, but in a more cryptic way, is the whole point of spiral energy is you are constantly thinking forward. You mm-hmm. are always, your ideals are based on what you want to accomplish. And being and, in the future. Uh, yeah, and toward the future. And if you were to look to the past and try and bring them back, that is actually going completely against the whole idea of spiral energy. Yeah. 
I think it's philosophically against the whole idea of the show, as and as well as the fact that um, a lot of people seem to forget this, but the spiral nemesis is still very much a threat, you know, to the universe that they yeah. have to deal with. Mm-hmm. And if anything counts as you know, as the as as the anti spiral says, you know, getting using your spiral power and getting drunk on it, you know, mm-hmm. I think resurrecting people from the dead is probably a good way to accelerate that destruction exactly, of the yeah. universe. Then you resurrect everybody, pretty mm-hmm. much. As a biologist, all that you know, spiral nemesis nonsense actually means a lot to me because it it hit me a little pretty hard actually. Like, uh, crud! I want to agree with the other with you know Simone, but everything he says makes sense. Yeah, well, I like it too because like Vero says, like don't listen to him, Simone, and then Lord Genome's like, no, that's true. <laughs> you know? Yeah, actually, I've learned it firsthand. I'm also ahead. But then, they're, then they're <laughs> basically the reason that they still keep going is like, but Nia's still out there waiting for you. And it's basically just like, well, that you know, ring. we still got to go do it. She took the ring, man. <laughs> that was the worst. <laughs> that was the one of my favorite running jokes ever. Just, just yeah. give me back my ring That's if you're not going to let me marry you. <laughs> yeah, that, that, that was the running joke we had through the show. Like, he wasn't going after Nia to, to get her. It was just ring, the man. ring. Like, that's all he cared about. And the fact yeah. that, right, when everything that something nice happened with her, she'd either turn to a large weapons device or, you know, explode. It's, explode. It, it's because she took the the ring, even though she said she wasn't going to marry him. Yeah, she's like, I guess I'll keep this because it looks really nice, and it's yours. And then goes, Thanks. and he's like, I need that back. And then he fights an entire war, and he's like, Thanks. Bitch, my ring. <laughs> that was Pretty like much. three months' salary. Yeah, for yeah. real, dude. Yeah. And I'm being a king and everything. Yeah, president. Yeah. It's like, oh, well, the and ring. Something. Oh, oh. Aren't you forgetting something? <laughs> <laughs> something that's kind of cool is at the end of the first movie, he gives Nia the, the green stone mm-hmm. like, that he mined. And she's like, oh, it's so pretty. And I, and I checked uh, at the very end of the second movie when um, she's writing you know, that letter to Kamina and you know, her arm starts disappearing. She's like, not yet. You can see on the desk there's a green stone that looks a lot like it. Mm-hmm. So I, I wonder if like, they basically took like, a part of that and like, you know, purified it or something and made that into the ring. That was my guess, too. Yeah, I yeah, can imagine. It seems that way. Um, one thing I do like about the, series, or the first movie, because the first movie doesn't have nearly as many changes as the second one does. Basically, mm-hmm. the beginning is a little different. The ending is a lot different. But in the middle, when they do that montage, you know, and they're going over Ross U and Keaton and the bathhouse and everything, uh, they or actually the they do. Of course, the bathhouse. They do add some scenes like of them just traveling, like sleeping, mm-hmm. and you know, going out and catching food. And I actually like that because it's sort of like the tr- the adventure travel aspect of the show that we really didn't get to see in the TV show. You know, the idea that they are constantly interacting as they're going from place to place. It's also worth noting that some of the beginning episodes of Gurren Lagann are kind of rough. There's one particular episode oh, yeah. the, where Keaton is first introduced, where yeah, the animation style is very different that and the writing me. is just bad. I was told by people to just skip that episode mm-hmm. and watch it once you've seen the entire thing, and I did. Maybe and I just tell everyone to do the exact same and, thing. And yeah. But the problem, though, is that that's the episode that introduces Keaton. Was mm-hmm. an important character. But they reintroduce him like entirely because Kamina doesn't remember him later on, so they just reintroduce him, and it's like, oh, okay. Yeah, that is true, but like, I don't know why they did that with that episode. Well, that episode physically hurt me because <laughs> the the animation, just uh-huh. the way they did the was mouth, so thick oh, yeah. it, it was really bad. Yeah, because well, I remember watching it. Nobody told me anything. I was just trying to watch the series. Episode. I didn't notice anything too bad because I was just enjoying it, but you're right. I did notice that. I think it was the thicker lines or something. It looked really yeah, it different. Was I thought lines I should have warned It's yeah. kind of like in, um, I remember watching, this is a weird comparison, but Naruto, they did the same thing as Chris was watching it, my old roommate. I watched over his shoulder, and I wonder who decides to make it so, it was mid-episode for that, but why they make it so drastically different for... Like, we're well, just like, all right, let's let the intern try. I don't know yeah. the reason why, but it's actually a director. Um, those of you who have seen Beck Mongolian Chop Squad, it's a uh, band anime. Apparently, the director of that show directed that particular episode because he was like a friend of one of the directors yeah, at Gainax like or against, something. Uh, and there was actually kind of a controversy with it because, like, he directed that episode and did it with his animation style, which doesn't necessarily. Well, personally, I'm not that huge of a fan of it in general, but it doesn't look bad necessarily. But the fact that they put it right in the middle of Gurren Lagann, which looks vastly different, yeah. you know, it just doesn't gel properly. And the episode itself isn't that great story wise. Glad it went back. And in. apparently, a bunch of like when the episode aired in Japan, like people were pissed about it, like yeah. writing on forums. And one mm-hmm. of the burning produce- tires and shit. Yeah, one of the producers of Gainax like went on like one of these forums that said like some you know bad comment like. Basically, telling the fans to f off, you know, because <laughs> like he was Stop getting he was getting show that he was getting pissed, you know, that they were getting so mad at like this thing that they probably put a hell of a lot of time and effort into, yeah. you know, and he had this friend direct the episode, and he actually ended up 
either getting fired or leaving Gynex because of like those comments oh and God. the controversy around it. So there's a whole whole hullabaloo about yeah. it. At least not bad per se, but like you said, it's just jarring and so different from mm-hmm. the rest of it all that, you know, it's just right. it's like upsetting. listening to a heavy metal song and then getting some like Electronic instrumental in between. Oh You're yeah! Like, Whoa! <laughs> yeah. Whoa! This and is weird. Like, hey, Since it's so near the early, so near the beginning, it's difficult when you're introducing people who don't generally like anime. Uh, mm-hmm. There are a lot of things in Gurren Lagann that you know scare those <laughs> sorts of people off. Yeah, I, I mean Yoko is, in my opinion, detrimental yeah. to the series at times. I here's, she's fourteen, and, and here's yes. the thing: I I what? love. That's that's it's, her official age. It's so hard for me because there's some <laughs> things that I I think mm-hmm. the reason why I like Yoko so much is because. I see the potential for her character. She, I agree. Her, she as a character has so much potential, but they don't utilize it in the show. She was in the That's beginning, like when she first comes down. She was. I've seen her character before, but never knew what she was from. And her, like anti matter rifle is sweet. Like her she's, fighting style, and her character. You're right, is cool. But you can tell certain things about her that are. She's <laughs> better in the movie. Yes, yeah, yeah, I like I well, agree. except yeah. in the second movie when they take yeah. out all the backstory, where she, you know she's wearing clothes. Yeah, yeah, that oh, uh, that, that, yeah. that is something. Well, that she, well and, 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 and th- they still <laughs> had a bit of that, a little bit of that, because they showed her as a teacher and all that. So, I mean, the thing though is the reason why I liked her in the second movie was because she actually did things. Because mm-hmm. if you remember in the anime, she had maybe two moments, yeah. and throughout all the movies, she had maybe like two additional moments. So she did some more things in the movie, but I just really wish that in the actual anime they had her just be more of a useful character rather than just the girl. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Or the eye candy. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's kind of funny. They add this whole scene in the second movie where um, after they've beaten the uh, the moon pretty much, you know, and they're prepping to so go. You said that, beating the moon. Like, <laughs> like you can say that about this anime and be comfortable. That's what I like about it. Yeah. yeah exactly. I mean, that's the best way to describe yeah. it. You know, and th- it's like basically when before they leave Earth, you know, to go fight the anti spirals, there's a, a whole added scene that I actually like a lot with like all the t- people of Team Gurren like talking and like Viral gets introduced to them. They're like, oh, we're cool with you, you know, because Simon chose you. Mm-hmm. And they like drink the sake, you know, mm-hmm. and that was all bros. cool. And you also yeah. got a little bit of development with Keaton and Yoko. Mm-hmm. And he, Keaton says something like, oh, well, Team Gurren won't be the same without your boobs, Yoko. <laughs> yeah. You know, and. And I, I do like, <laughs> they do add a moment f- with her later on uh, in that second movie where after Keaton dies, you know, they go up and start fighting. Spoiler. Like everyone's, well, there have been a ton of spoilers already. <laughs> you know, Spoiler. everyone's fighting, you know, the, the anti spiral like weird hand things. And they're all screaming. And then Yoko shows up and she's like crying and like shoots out like missiles upon missiles. And they do mm-hmm. one of those things where like you see explosions. And then we go wider and there's more explosions. And then wider and there's more explosions. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and they only get bigger. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Pretty yeah. much. They just didn't have enough room to keep panning away. Yeah. yeah it's like, like, we'll just stop here. Another little moment, like I understand why they cut it out because they didn't need it. But it's one of my actual favorite little attacks in the series is when um, in the TV show when uh, Simone goes out and fights the... Like she's fighting like twenty Mugan and they're like surrounding him. Like, what do you do? And it's like, well, we'll just make more drills. And he makes like, I think it's like Giga Drill Breaker Maximum or something. He yeah. makes like drills like all around him and just reflects all of them back at the Mugan. And it's just this huge like nuclear explosion. It's a really cool little fight scene that they took out, you know, for understandable reasons. But I miss it. Yeah, they really drill that point home. That's what's nice about it. <laughs> <laughs> just waiting for the puns. When Kenny's on the podcast, gotta wait for the puns. You guys are kind of screwed with that. Hey, I'll be here all night. <laughs> You're with, literally the worst. With with, with Yoko, uh, this may be surprising, but a character can be eye candy and still have really good character development. Oh, yeah. True so at times, yes, but I don't think that happened quite enough with her. No, personally. no, no. I agree. What I'm saying is that I wish that she was more than just eye candy. Mm. Like, you can have a character who's really, really pretty, but also has an in-depth personality and yeah. backstory. He's more than angry. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Some things will overlook that, which is unfortunate. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What am I upon rewatching the show? Like, because now I own the actual whole TV show on DVD oh, in English, and well, I think it has Japanese in there too. But I mm-hmm. usually watch in English because that's what I'm used to. Um, one of my favorite moments, voice acting wise, because obviously, like, it's always great when you get to the epic moments, you know, and the big speeches that Simon or Kamina makes or whatever. <laughs> one of my favorite moments is in episode nine, which is right after Kamina dies, when Simon and Rossi are out there fighting a bunch of gunmen, and Rossi is like telling Simon to calm down, and he's like just crazy mad at all these gunmen and he has some line where he's like you know Kamina would never run or bro would never run away not Kamina not ever you know he's just the way he screams it like both yeah, in yeah, the yeah. Japanese and the and the English it's so like powerful Takes just to the emotional uh, you know peak 
those yeah. moments. I, I, well, didn't didn't his depression last like two or three entire episodes? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I was like yeah. three episodes. Uh, yeah, two or three. Episodes. Wonderful Shinji. And and it made me those oh. three episodes are some of my now. I hate those episodes not because they're bad episodes, but because it's so different from the reason why I started watching Gurren Lagann. Because I mm-hmm. I watched it for the for the inspiration. Yeah. And because uh, Simone was so depressed, it just brought me down. And I'm like, wow, <laughs> yeah. this is really depressing. I don't it like this. But it, it's effective because that's it what is. it's trying to do. Yeah. So yeah. I'm really glad afterward. And actually, in we were talking about Shinji earlier. In that Tumblr post, I was pointing like examples of like how you can do that sort of character and make it good. Because Simone starts out the show as this weak, weak kind of wimpy little kid, you know, that only ever does anything because Kamina, you know, Tells make, him to. Tells him to do it. You know, and then Kamina dies and goes into this deep depression. But the key thing about it with Simon that Shinji doesn't get is that he like grows from it and becomes a better person. Exactly, yeah. Well, he got the punch the in the pain. face he needed. Yeah. He, yeah. He, he finds more reasons to live and remembers that, you know, he has people around him who love him. Yeah, pretty Too much. Bad. And you everybody know, needs a punch in the face. Everyone. Yeah. yeah. And that he's got to continue on, you know, because, you know, believe in the, don't believe in the Kamina that you believe in, don't believe in the Simon that I believe in, believe in the Simon that believes in you. Yeah. You know, that's the big final moment that Kamina gets. Basically, just believe in yourself. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. But it sounds so much more fun. Yeah. And yeah. I yell that at people and it's they get so epic. confused. Yeah. yeah, I mean, because earlier we were talking about, like, you know, favorite moments from the show and, like, or from the movies, I guess. And for me, you know, favorite moment has to be the final battle. But a close second has to be... Uh, the whole sequence of Kamina's death in episode eight, because oh, no. both in the TV, I mean, it's the same in the movie that is in the TV show, but it's just so well done. What from, a strong episode. Yeah, from like, you know, where he comes up and punches Simon when he's, you know, freaking out. And then they, it, it's sort of like, cues you almost that something bad's gonna happen because he goes back into his cockpit and like there's no music, it's just silence. And then of course, you know, the, the what's his name? Timulf comes up from underneath, <laughs> you know, and stabs him. <laughs> And the part that always gets me is when he puts his spear over top of him and stabs mm-hmm. it through his back, oh, and Lord. you get that shot of him like screaming with the blood splattering the screen. It just shows him like just basically getting wrecked. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I'd have to agree. The best part in the series and in the movie, I was gonna say, was when Simon was losing it, wasn't able to get the ship because he's like, "Oh, Yoko doesn't love me. All these things. I'm so sad." Mm-hmm. And then he just socks him in the mouth with. He shoots the arm off just to punch him in the face. And I was like, <laughs> "Yes, well, I, that I, is what he would do." Another part I like about that is. You know, you see like Simone's like little monitor thing instead of being the normal spiral drill mm-hmm. thing we see. It's like going like high wire. Yeah. And, and Simone like causes like all the volcanoes around to start exploding and like, you know, green spiral energy is going everywhere mm-hmm. and the die guns on is shooting everything. It's like that really shows you the first sample of like that Simone is not just like a powerful fighter. Like he could destroy the world, you know, mm-hmm. if he got like too out of whack. He's got the heart. <laughs> right. One thing that frustrated me about the part after Kamina's death was how quickly the other members of the team wanted Simon to get over the death of someone who was essentially his father figure. I mean, his parents had died and Kamina had been functionally raising him mm-hmm. from that point on. And they want him, like, it, if you just watch the show once, it seems like it's only been well, a day, but it's been more like a couple of weeks. And that's still really fast to want someone to get, just get over well, a death. Yeah, it's, it's one week, actually. They say it's been like seven days since Kamina died. What's interesting about that, though, because I remember rewatching the first episode, like when uh, he, he like bumps into Kamina for the first time, that's when Kamina is introduced. And he's like, oh, how's it going, Kamina? He's like, don't call me Kamina, call me bro. And at first, Simon was like, sort of like awkward with it. Mm-hmm. So it almost makes me wonder, like, how much of a connection did they have before that moment? You know, yeah, that like, is I, don't, I don't even know if that was really like the first time they spent actual time together. Or if, you know, they had hung out a lot before then. They're you know. bros. Yeah. Well, they're bros they, at heart, you know. Did it all change well, when he found the drill? I mean, relationship wise. Yeah. It makes you wonder, like you said, you know, how was he, you know, Kamina to Simon before all that happened? I, I know for a fact that they were at least friends because I remember the whole uh, Kamina uh, oh. pushing him forward when mm-hmm. they were uh, stuck underground and Simon was drilling them out. So they became friends, but I think the reason why Simon was nervous about calling him bro is because Simon didn't really seem to have many friends. Mm-hmm. So the fact that someone was so close to him that they felt like oh you know you don't have to call me by name just call me bro you know I I think that made him feel uncomfortable and I think the part that makes me like like the Kamina's death thing the most is that Kamina is like such a badass that he avenges his own death Mm -hmm. because that's I mean oh man there's this one particular track of music it's called like um 
it's, the Japanese name is like Tenwo Tusuke, which I think translates to like, you know, with your drill, pierce the heavens or something like that. And it plays like at every like, not every epic moment, but a lot of the epic moments, like it's the most inspiring piece of music. And it plays during basically from where Kamina punches him with the robot arm to, you know, them fighting off all the robots and fighting Timof. Like when Timof shoots the beam at him, it's like, it can't break through this hand, you know, and grabs <laughs> the beam. Mm-hmm. And then he gives the, you know, believe in the you that believes in yourself speech, which is probably one of the best speeches of the whole series. And Epic. we see Giga Drill Breaker for the first time. Mm-hmm. And I admit, I love the English dub a lot, but uh, his Japanese Seiyu does you it even, even better. It. Yeah, than, I was going to say, yeah, yeah. you guys English show guy. me the comparison, and it is miles different. That's what I like yeah. about it. Mm-hmm. It's just. I don't know, something about the way he just, like, lengthens it out, just screaming it so, like, powerfully. And then I love afterwards where he just goes out saying, like, later, buddy, you know, and you get those shots of the rain, you know, and Simon they're crying and Lagan, you know, looks like he's crying because of the rain. And then he says, like, on that day, we lost something that couldn't be replaced. For, it's so effective. For a while, and I just wanted to see if anyone would get this, um... On uh, my 3DS, I changed my message that my me would say when I street pass people to uh, later, buddy. <laughs> and I wanted to see if anyone would get that. It oh didn't seem God. like anyone got it, but I did tell one person, and they were like, oh, God. Dude, oh, why? that hurts. Why would you do that? Dude, right? why? <laughs> yeah. Later, buddy. Well, that's and like I, putting on the leaf on the wind. Well, and that's something yeah. I didn't realize the first time I watched the show, but you know when Simone uh, leaves Kamina you know, in the dream world, he says, like, let's go, buddy. You know, yeah. so it's like an inversion on Kamiya's last words, which is like, oh, that's good. Wow, that is true. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's nice. Little I, I hadn't thought of that, actually. Yeah. Wah. So I guess we might as well start talking about, you know, basically what's different in the first movie. Because where it really starts to change is right around the time that Nia gets back. Because in the, in the movie, they sort of do it interestingly, where instead of them discovering that Nia is the Spiral King's daughter, she just basically is like, hello, friends. I am... You know, Nia, daughter exactly, to yeah. you know Lord Genome. And Exposition, just all like, you know, key to solve. Yeah, they yeah. like interrogate her. I, I love I love that scene where Keaton's interrogating her and she, he's <laughs> just dumbfounded because <laughs> she just like keeps like asking him like, "What is a human? You know, what yeah. is hate? Yo, he gets out of it. He's like, what, what is a human? What, what does it mean to beat the crap out of? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he was so. I'll done. show you right now. Yeah. You know, and there was moments like that, like, I think Dayaka goes and, like, talks to Yoko, like, in the background, like, you know, she seems harmless, but we should keep an eye on her. Dayaka, I think, is interesting because he he probably could have been the leader of Dai Gurren if he actually had, like, that energy and spirit, because mm-hmm. he has all of, like, the responsible leader qualities that you need. Yeah. But I think he just doesn't have the same, you know, emotions that a Kamina or a Simon or even Kitan, you know, had. Yeah. <laughs> But it was obvious that Keaton was not the proper choice for leader because he's too headstrong, you know, mm-hmm. too not smart enough really to lead. The and team. he doesn't have someone who can temper that like Kamina did. Right. That's true. Yeah, because to be perfectly honest, I love Kamina. Obviously, like he's mm-hmm. one of the most charismatic characters in anime history. But I will say, uh, I actually say um, for those who have seen Fate Zero, I think Ryder is actually more charismatic because. Ryder's, you know, has a lot of great speeches and stuff too, but he's also very intelligent. Whereas Kamina is pretty stupid at times, like how he, you know, gets mad at Simone for saving them from Vero's big beam attack. Like, you know, and never, never from a fight. Understood that. It's like if you didn't run from that fight, you'd be dead. You know, there's so many times where Kamina would have died if Simone hadn't been there to help him out. You know? Yeah. No, I mean, after watching Fate Zero, you're right. Like, um, uh, Ryder's one of my favorite characters ever because he's awesome. And those pictures were so sad. We kept posting those. But anyways, <laughs> oh that's one thing. I, I Both parallels. Like, obviously, this is the direct why they're different because they're both hyper charismatic. But, you know, he's obviously the military and actor like a writer was. So he was able oh, to control a bunch of men be very awesome. smart about it. But, yeah, the one thing that Kamina does have over him, though, is because he takes... I mean, not say over him that he's better, but just say one thing he didn't have is because he's so kind of stupid, he could just mm-hmm. do things that were unimaginable and they worked. Right, like that's the, one thing that does give him an edge, like, but not that doesn't work all the time. Like the who do you think the hell I am kick? Yeah, like that. And then he breaks yeah. his arm, punching yeah. guy. But still, you're right. Ryder gives some that's of the best true, speeches yeah. I've ever heard in it. Ryder and Kamina. You know, we should write a book about that. Yeah, yeah. there you go. Have you seen Fate Zero? Yeah, yeah I did. It? Oh yeah, okay, so good. pretty awesome. We have to oh talk about God. that sometimes. It's, it's so good. Um, but then I, there's another little shot I like where um, Rossi was just like walking by, like he sees uh, Lagan in the background, and Simone's just there dragging a statue of what we know is coming up, but you can't really tell from yeah, the shot. Yeah, just a rock. Just, at yeah, the time. him dragging that it. That was really sad. Mm. Yeah. And then I, because I went up and looked this up, you know, there's that scene where. Yoko, Nia, and Simone are all in Simone's room with all the Kamina statues, you know, and they have a whole conversation. That is actually different from the TV show. Uh, 
because Nia is there talking to him in the TV show in that room, but it plays out differently and Yoko isn't there, you know, so they expand on it and change it up in the movie. So that's really, really where things start to change. And I like that because Nia is basically telling him, like, you know, you're not your bro. You know, you're you, Simone. You saved me. You know, you're wrong. You're not worthless. You know, he's telling him all these things and he just can't quite accept it. Mm-hmm. You know, and Yoko kind of yells at Nia for it. Like, you don't even understand how Simone or any of us feel. You, know, you didn't know Kami and all this stuff. So, I don't know. Did you guys like the changes they made in that scene? <laughs> yeah. I did enjoy that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so then... Right, and then we get, you know, Adine coming to attack, and they make a slight change there, because she's like, you know, what is Princess Nia doing here, you know, because in the show, she retreats after hearing that, and then comes back the next episode to fight him, mm-hmm. but in that, she just looks at this like, little graphic on her screen, it's like, it's Nia getting it's dropped st- in a trash can. And the, she- the way they did that graphic was so funny, but also really sad, because you yep. understand what it's conveying. Yeah. Just, oh, you know, just dropping off the trash. The trash being Nia, a young oh, woman. Yeah, and that was a dark <laughs> moment. But up, uh, I was a yeah. trash. Oh, and I don't. I th- I do think they do a great job with it because you know, obviously, in the show, actually, one of my favorite parts is basically from when Simone, you know, becomes the leader of Team Daigura and through all the fights with the four generals leading up to the Spiral King, because that's just like basically you know five or six episodes of constant action, which is great. Oh, yeah. But for the purposes of the movie, I think it's smart that they basically just turn into this thing where it's just one huge battle Super with fight. all of the generals. Mm. Plus Viral with his own Daigunzan esque mech, you know, which mm-hmm. was kind of cool. Like that too. He, yeah, that he's like on the same level as the generals, pretty much. And his tragic thing where he's literally immortal and can't die, so you can observe every fight. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, yeah. what's interesting is that I, because in the TV show, it's after his fights with like Simon and everything that he becomes immortal. So I don't think at that point in the movie he was immortal, which begs the question of how the hell he survives. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The you know. Team Diger and you know Giga Drill special, you know that kills that was everything. Awesome. Yeah. So I, I, either he was already immortal at that point, or I he was, or yeah, because I, I, I thought think, he was. Too. I think the whole point yeah. is that he is immortal. They had a cutscene where uh, Lord Gino was talking to him real quick. Saying yeah, that. yeah, right. But see, in the TV show though, how it plays out is remember he fights with um, Simone again uh, with um, uh, the bird guy, uh, Saito uh, Mandrew. Yeah, whatever his name is. And he fights, yep. Yeah, he fights him inside his ship. And it was after that, I think, that he went and talked to the Spiral King. It was like, you know, what is a human being? You yeah. know, and then in, when he fought Simone in Teplin, he was like, I'm immortal now. You know, you're not going to be able to beat me. And then Simone just crushes him. You know? Yeah, go away. Oops. So I think that was, in the TV show, that's where he was immortal. Maybe in the movie they say he became immortal then, but I don't the, know. The way I saw it is that he was always immortal. But then again, if, if that's true, that like it was, uh, maybe they just changed it for the movie or something. Yeah. If, I think that's the case, yeah. Yeah, I think one of the, uh, it was a very, very slight change, but something I really liked about the show, because it was just like a little nice touch that they took out, was every time that um, Simon would drill in with Kamina, he'd move his head to the side and the drill would poke out, and then, yeah, it was, yeah. I just like that. Like, I saw just like, reused that. animations, but it's funny, so yeah, you don't Yeah, because it wasn't supposed to fit together, but they made it happen, well, and then it worked. Because that's one of the funniest moments, honestly, when, you know, and then, <laughs> yeah, he's like, for the first time, let's combine. He straightens it out. <laughs> he's like, He doesn't even know if it's going to work, he just does it. You know, it's like, yeah. Yeah. As they're saying, they're going to combine. Uh, Liron is just like, no, I'm sorry, I made that robot. You you can't do that with that. That's not how that I works. I thought there was in the show. I'm like, is he kidding himself? When I saw it happen. I'm like, there's no way this can work. When he put it on, I'm like, are, are you being and serious? It, and it, and and it then just it, looked really stupid for the first like ten seconds. And I'm just glad that the reason they had the little thing on their head, the little like half moons, because they took it from him. Like they put the hat on, it just fused. Now yeah. like, they can absorb everything <laughs> on themselves. Pretty and then much. when they get the jetpack, oh. yeah. Well, in the in the TV show, it's like actually kind of a big deal. In the movie, it's just like Simone when Simone combines and turns into Gurren Log, and it just sort of like happens like real quick. He's just like, I'm just gonna grab this so I can go up here and be epic in the sky. Yep, <laughs> you know, which was awesome, of course. But you know, I, so I love that reveal where like it's all four generals. You know, you could they're reusing some footage from those episodes, mm-hmm. but a lot of it is new, like with you know, all the groups fighting, you know, and they're getting their asses kicked pretty bad. Like, it's pretty much a desperate situation for them, which I like. You know, it's greater tension. Um, and I also, one of my favorite moments, I'm glad they kept this from the TV show, is where, you know, Nia's being told about her past and how she's just like this doll, you know, and they got that cool animation with mm-hmm. her in the Spiral King. And I think Simone's like listening to all this and he's like, you know, he cast her away, you know, she's like a doll to him, you know, and he like grips the, dr- the drill, you know, mm-hmm. And that's probably where he runs out, you know, and gets on Cytomander's gunman, but we don't actually see that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I, I actually in the 
and the t- this is something they changed in- from the movie that I actually like a lot because in the TV show, Nia just sort of accepts that she's a doll, you know. But in the TV show or in the movie, sh- she's being told that, and then you see Simone climbing the the thing, and she's like, you know, it's true that humans are small, but they have you know strong hearts, then they keep fighting. You know, they're not dolls, and neither am I. You know, mm-hmm. some- something like that. And it's like that's a nice little powerful message. I like that she denies it in yeah. the movie mm-hmm. because in, in she's the more sh- human than in the show again. Nia has a little bit of uh, unused potential as a character. Yeah. Like, yeah, they used her for all the anti-spiral stuff, and you get that kind of emotion. Mm-hmm. But other than that, like, she doesn't really do much. Right. You yeah. know? Um, but, 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 but that, <laughs> but, but that moment where, uh, where she denies the fact that she's a doll, yeah. like, that's pretty inspirational also. Yeah. I also love, you see Simone climbing Cytomander's gunman, and he's using, you know, the big drill thing that he's got, and then he's using his core drill, so apparently that thing is like sharp enough to pierce metal because it's like tiny as hell, but back, <laughs> he's still going. Back with at it. home, I have that uh, the that necklace. drill, the necklace uh, drill, and if you, if how about this, it can pierce skin. Like just the remade one is really sharp, oh. so I'm gonna assume so they know. that that the that the one in the anime slash movie, like <laughs> yeah, it's probably really really sturdy. Yeah, well, yeah. I guess given the fact he uses it to drill through Lord Gnome in the, in the climate. <laughs> oh, my God. Works. That's so epic. I, I think that was using spiral energy, though, because he uses a tiny drill well, and then just caves out his chest. Giant hole. True, but and he keeps talking. But you see him stab, like, the actual drill itself into yeah. him. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That is true. He, he, he does do that. It's, it's like, a little more than strip waxing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, and then... Um, and then you get Simone, you know, going up there, and that's around the time where Yoko's like thinking, "Oh, so that's what he meant," you know. And she flashes back to Kamina talking about the time where you know Simone drilled them out of that thing. And my favorite line from that, I think, is what he says, like, "I promised myself that I wouldn't be mocked by that back of his," or something like that. And mm-hmm. it's like you know the whole idea of going forward and all that yeah. sort of stuff. You know, great stuff. And it, it's also interesting because Simone gets hit off from the the gunman, and then. Logon like literally flies up to him, which is something we mm-hmm. never really saw before. Where Logon like acted completely on its own, you know, separate from Simon, which is kind of cool to see. Mm-hmm. You know, he goes up there, saves Nia, which is awesome, and then you know combines with Rasu. One little bit I like that they kept is the um, or they changed that around a little is um, instead of uh, 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 Gurren Logan fighting with Guam's big thing. It's Keaton instead, and he goes up there to fight him, and then he gets he's getting crushed by like that mm-hmm. hug thing, and he's like freaking out. And his sisters have to come in and save him, and he's yeah. just like, "Oh God, this was a bad idea." The, those sisters are more characters that I would have loved to see a bit more from, especially the youngest one. Oh yeah, yeah, because she, she gets left behind, yeah. you know, in the in the end of the show. But um, and then of course, you know, you knew that they had to make the. The moment where I always refer to it as the moment where Simone becomes a man. He says that was one of the best moments of the TV show, and they make it even better in the anime. Yeah, lighting. Yeah, well, like because you know they got he's up there in the sky and he's got all the lights from the the projectors up there. You can tell the animation budget goes way up there. Oh yeah, it's so detailed. All guns blazing for that. Oh yeah, so that was awesome. You know, and then he he kills Cytomander. You know, does the Gigatro breaker to kill him, which was awesome. And then, uh, and then I also like that down on the below, Keaton combines with his sisters, and they're like, you know, we can't let Simon like have all the fun, you know, we gotta show him or whatever. And he blasts Guam's, you know, <laughs> thing, which was cool, you know, another cool moment for Keaton. See, that's one thing I think you realize about the show too: the more powerful Simon gets, the more glasses he gets to throw. Like, you know, the giant glasses <laughs> that Gurren Lagan has, oh, he yeah, yeah. throws like eight of them near the, or like a bunch of them and cuts things in half later on. At least oh, the movie, yeah. and it, it, it so pins sweet, them man. up so that they he can do the because I know originally breaker. he was like. Two or three yeah. of them, or that, that's like it's, it's huge. Well, well, that's right, because in 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 the fight that right there with Cytomander up in the sky, he like, it's like eight. Yeah, he has like eight in a row, and he just cuts them in half. And that's then, you tell. The Giga Joe He's reaching max level. Mm. He gets more glasses. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> well, his glasses change when he has enough spiral. Power. That's right. They become. <laughs> I forgot about they become that. Become really stupid. I remember looking. you guys pointed that out. Like, wait, here I, it comes, and I, it I, happened. I was like, I liked them. I thought they were awesome. No, I like it. I, I just did not expect it. I've seen so many pictures of Simone in those glasses standing in front of the Canadian. 
Canadian flag with the Canadian flag as his cape. <laughs> and I, I just can't stop seeing that whenever I see those glasses. I know. I, I, I guess it. they're not bad, but they're not as cool as they're Kami not. does. I mean, let's be frank here. Well, don't worry. In the end, they're coming <laughs> back in giant honest. celestial form with his glasses. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, it's sort of a combination of Kamina and Simo, yeah, I yeah. guess, for the Super Tangentopa, but Super glasses. I mean, let's, let's, let's also be honest with the fact that if you saw someone wearing Kamina's glasses in real life, before you had seen Gurren Lagann, <laughs> that would have been like... Before you had seen Gurren Lagann, mm-hmm. you would just look at that and be like, that, that's really dumb. Wow. Like, yeah. n- now wow. if I saw someone with those glasses... I would high five. I would high five, yeah, yeah. I'd be like, okay, that's awesome. Double high five with that Yeah, guy. seriously, yes. no. Of course. <laughs> Total and high five. What did you guys think, you know, when all the, the remaining generals all combine, like, into one machine? Oh, my God, I forgot about like, that. Like, so <laughs> cool. It, it, it's cool, but at the same time, it's like, it looks kind of stupid when they, like, pan out to it. It's like, hey, hey, what was the, stupid. How what do was the I point do? of combining? I, I think the point was like, oh, you guys could combine? Well, we so could do a four-person combine. We'll just do a super gig. A drill breaker. Yeah, well, extreme. I love that part though, <laughs> in that like it goes out and then they're like fire, you know, and they shoot like all those missiles and they like give them like multicol you know, like colors for each yeah. stream. So there's like a bunch of them go and they make this huge they explosion. Were shooting rainbows. Exactly. Literally. It was beautiful. And then but it. then of course, you know, Gurren Lagan's down there blocking with his drill, <laughs> you know. No matter what it is, the drill can block everything. Of I course. love that. And then they, yeah. they they like all go around and like say their names and like then it's the you know, team Gurren Giga Drill Breaker special, which is awesome. My favorite part about it is because it's all like one continuous shot is when he goes into like, I think it's Guam's like thing and he like, Gurren Lagan lands like in the middle and you see all those lights that were with him like in the background, like blowing stuff up, like hitting the walls mm-hmm. and he Giga Drill Breakers up, you know, and kills everyone, mm-hmm. you know, and then, if, and then when he lands too, he lands down and like explodes behind him. It's a really detailed like explosion. Like you see the parts falling and exploding and it's like, ah, the animation was so good there. I don't know. What did you guys think of that? The change, adding that as like the big final attack. I loved it. Oh, it was so great. Yeah, it was a big boom. I liked it. A big uh, boom. A fitting end for all the <laughs> Boom and a bang. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I liked it. I also really liked in the anime, though, how each fight was its own little arc or its own little episode. Right. So I thought that was interesting, but for a movie's sake, it was pretty cool how the, the animation budget was so high just for that one part yeah. because mm-hmm. it goes through and shows him going through each built, like each uh, room, each building, part of the mech, and then he comes out the, the right. back. Yeah, and one part we should probably talk about as far as Yoko is concerned, because we talked about you know her not getting as much character development in the movies, but yeah. one thing that they add is her fighting a Dine, that you was know, good. which had some fan service in it, of course, yeah. when her bra <laughs> gets taken out. Whew, you know, but, forgot about that. But it was a pretty badass moment. Like, when she's there, like, fighting all of her, like, random dudes, like, with her gun, like, using it just to, mm-hmm. as a polearm, pretty much. Yeah. That was cool. Has a pistol hiding in her hair. In her hair, of course. <laughs> <laughs> Where else are you going to put it? Yeah. You know, so it's that was plausible. that was kind of a cool moment for Yoko, you know, and then they end it with like them at Kamina's grave, you know, which I feel like is a, mm-hmm. you know, good stopping point. And, you know, and actually, I don't know if any of you guys see this, but if you actually watch through the very end of the credits, it goes the shot of the spiral king basically like in his throne and like saying like, oh, they're coming. Well, you know, I'll be ready for him or something. And it yeah. shows actually a shot of the Zen gone there underneath mm-hmm. his uh, underneath the throne room. I was like, so it's kind of like a little teaser for the next movie. Yeah. Mm-hmm. For those who haven't seen that. Um, one small detail about the generals that I love is that each of them, it, their names are based off of <laughs> the components of DNA. And Neem, I mean, uh, yeah. Cytosine oh, and Gino. Yeah. 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 Lord, well, oh, wow. And Spiral yeah. King is called Lord Genome. They're not being very mm, yeah. subtle Genome. there. Yeah. <laughs> but, In your face. So, yeah, I actually didn't know that. That's kind of a cool detail. See? There's a lot of strangely, strangely sciencey stuff in there that just confused me. (laughs) (laughs) Like, 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 was was that was that supposed to be there? Are you? Yeah, yeah, you did it on purpose. Yeah. Well, yeah. Like earlier on in the second half of the show, they try to explain certain things with like science, and then it gets near the end, and it's just like it's just like you know, spiral energy. Like they pretty much don't even try to explain it anymore. At least, like Mark said, they tried with the whole uh, the the dark matter ocean kind of thing. (laughs) They tried. I mean, you give them points, they didn't try to explain it. Yeah, it's spacing. But, uh, uh, essentially, magic. <laughs> magic. Magic. Very much. One of the things that they added, we're moving on to the second movie here, um, that they added that I really like is after they, they beat the Spiral King, you know, which is pretty much the same as the TV show, they just cut it, it differently. It was way too quick, though, personally. Mm-hmm. I, they I kind of just shot to him actually like, drilling through him. Well, what's interesting about it, because I understand what they were doing, because basically they cut to when he's fighting him like fist to fist, like between Lagan and... 
the Spiral King, and then they cut back to the earlier parts of the fights. And they get most of the important moments in there, but you do miss some things. But I think they were just doing yeah. that basically so that they could cut it up, you know, to make it faster. I mean, Lord Genome's able to fight him in... Like in actually log in logon, which is impressive. With his like, bare hands. Seeing that, I was yeah. like, "Dang, he is actually a Mama Jamba bad guy." Like usually, mm. you know, bad guys are pretty good, but he could actually go mano a mano with his best form he at that balls. time, at least. Right. But then after that, I love that they do that cool montage of them just building Kamina City, pretty yeah. much. And you just get there's a lot of little small moments of like you know Simon and Ross just standing there with like plans, you know, laid out in front of them, and you know Yoko doing going off to do her thing and mm-hmm. all that, which wasn't you know I like it when they have those nice little additions of just basically like their normal lives, you know, mm-hmm. yeah. when they're not saving the world. And then, uh, and then they they introduce in the second movie this idea of Nia writing the letters to Kamina, which I actually Love really that. like. You know, because it, it brings in an extra element of sadness at the end of the oh. show with what happens to oh, her. Of course. More sadness. Oh, all the sadness. And another, probably mm-hmm. one of my favorite changes that they made as far as character development goes, because Nia gets a lot more, I think, in the second movie than she did in the TV show, mm-hmm. is that rather than her calling Simone and talking to her, him over the phone about, like, the marriage thing, she actually talks to him in person, mm-hmm. you know, and they're talking back and forth. And that's where she says the line about, you know, I, I want to plant flowers all across the world, you know. Mm-hmm. And she says, like, we're very different people, but I still want to be with you. And they actually say, like, face to face, like, yes, I want to marry you, you know. And they go in for the kiss, only for the anti smile <laughs> to appear in the moon. <laughs> the <laughs> perfect cutoff. Yeah, the cock block him pretty much. What an SOB. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. You like that ring. Yeah, the ring. That's where it all was lost. Yeah. Anti spirals bring back my ring. <laughs> <laughs> I will, will say, because I actually, I know a lot of people really hate Rossio in the second half of the show. Mm. He yeah, becomes he, kind I, of a sociopath. A little bit, but I, I don't know. I sympathize with him. I always say Rossio is pretty much in the wrong show. Like, what he's mm-hmm. doing is very logical and would work yeah, yeah, if it wasn't world. a show where yeah. basically fighting spirit is all you need to win, mm-hmm. you know? Uh, he's genre savvy for the wrong genre. It's exactly. always being described to me. You know, mm-hmm. and he does, it doesn't work as well, I think, in. Um, the t- in the movie as it does in the TV show because you don't get all that stuff of his origins. You know, like, I love it when they bring back, like, the idea of, you know, only so many people can, you know, live. You know, like, when he's taken all the people, you know, off of Earth, it's like how in the, in the village, village, you know, yeah. you had to cast out, you know, those people because they couldn't, you know, stay in the village and all that. Like, I like how they bring those parallels and you don't get that in the movie, which is kind of a bummer, but it makes sense that they didn't have time for it. Um, and then, I don't know, most of the stuff, you know, with like the Mugan stuff is great or, or pretty much the same. They accelerate certain things. Mm-hmm. One moment that I really like that they add is when Simone and Viral are in jail and you see Simone does the drill in his palm thing that the, that the Spiral King did. And then later when he's talking to Nia, he's like, you know, I'm actually glad that they locked me up because when I saw them, the people's tearing down bro statue. I he grew, couldn't take it. Yeah. yeah, he's like, I grew angry. I had this power welling up inside me, you know, like more comparisons between him and the Spiral King. Like oh he, he could have maybe, you know, if he let his anger guide him, you know, mm-hmm. gone out and like blown them up. And, you and, know? and I feel like those comparisons weren't made quite as heavily uh, in uh, the anime. Yeah, it's I mean, definitely an improvement. They, they, yeah. they made comparisons between him and the Spiral King, but there wasn't any of that, like, him making the, the drill. Like, he never did that in the show, mm-hmm. which I like because it also showed, like, how powerful he is. Yeah. yeah. You know, he could do this thing that Lord Genome could do. He was in that prison because he genuinely believed he he needed to be there for humanity to benefit. Right. And that's one thing that I really respect about yeah. him is he's really just trying to be a good leader and let people live Decide. in whatever, mm-hmm. whatever it takes. Right. Like, he, he was basically saying it's all in Rossi's hands. But then what's funny is Nia comes there and basically tells him, like, Rossi's going to fail and here are the reasons why. And, he, and it's supposed to give him ultimate despair. But instead, it's basically just like, well, now I know that Rossi needs my help and yeah. I have to go fight. Yep. Oops, and sorry. so <laughs> that beam of yours isn't going to kill me, you know. I'm, I'm FYI. Sorry. <laughs> sorry, <laughs> sorry. Don't even try. Which, you know, obviously Yoko comes in and shoots it and stops that confrontation from happening. But I almost wonder if mm-hmm. Simon could have done something with his spiral power to protect himself. You know, oh, like, yeah. would he have yeah, died? He... I don't know. Who knows? Yeah. Indeed. He but, chose not to, so. He, well, yeah. That, pretty much. He just has to choose not to die. <laughs> you know. And then, you know, we get up into space and, you know, the beginning of that battle is pretty much the same as the TV show. One moment I really like that they add is they do the double boomerang with the sunglasses and it's like oh this shot of God. like it going and killing a bunch of Mugons and then it goes <laughs> into a spiral. Yeah. It's like so many explosions. It's so awesome. So tasty. 
And then they turned the moon <laughs> into the galaxy Gurren Lagann, which was an awesome change it in doesn't my mind. Any better than that. Like, literally. I was like, there was a cool moment in the TV show where the moon like had all those like cannons open up and shut out all those beams, and then mm-hmm. he made into a giant ball and threw it back at it. Mm-hmm. Like that was a cool moment. But at the same time, having him, you know, as the Ark Gurren, like stopping the fist of the Galaxy Gurren from hitting Earth and all that, like it was, that was a cool addition. Yeah, mm-hmm. you know, and and uh, Jorge, you mentioned earlier that y- one of your favorite moments in the show is actually when he. Has, he stops himself f- before you know killing Nia. Mm-hmm. You know when she's standing there in front of the that hole. hesitation, an yeah. inch in front of it with the huge fist. Oh yeah, yeah. which That's is like <laughs> another little addition because in the show it was just the Gurren Lagann, but in this mm-hmm. it's the Arc Gurren Lagann. It makes and it, like a lot more zooms sense. into Nia. Yeah, she and she is just, so tiny. And yeah, the drill is like here, man. You got to <laughs> give him points for that. The fact he's that much control. Yeah. The, the drill just goes right up to her neck just before yeah, hitting yeah, her. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Which. Unfortunately, I don't know why they didn't add this because in the show they say that Nia's body was like the Mugan, and if she yeah. had been killed, those little balls would have gone everywhere and blown things up. They don't mention it in the movie, which is a shame because that gave a legitimate reason for why Simon couldn't kill her. Mm-hmm. You know. Oh, but you know, I thought also the reason why he couldn't kill her right away was also you know their past. He right. kind of loved her. And stuff. <laughs> yeah, but if he really wants to protect humanity, yeah, like yeah. but needs well, the many of her needs the, of his. Pants. The the, mm-hmm. the the whole point was but even even if his determination went past their love, that would have killed them anyways. Because if he had been like, okay, well, you know, even though I love you, I still have to do this for humanity's sake. If he Oops. had killed her, yeah. then he still would have been screwed. Because yeah. then it would have set off a whole bunch of mines, and it would have exploded, and everyone would have right lost eaten up their and died. Which is yeah. interesting because I think when when they're going towards that thing, they say like like Nia's in there. You know, he's like, I don't care. You know, I'll 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 do what it takes, basically. You yeah. know, but then he still stops and. You know, he says the whole thing with Nia, like, you know, you were wearing that ring because you're still in there. You know, the real Nia is still in there, mm-hmm. which I sort of buy, I sort of don't, you know, with those flashes of, mm-hmm. you know, evil looking Nia. And she's like, help yeah. me, Simone, you know, yeah. yelling out. He, I feel like he kind of just decided that she was calling out. <laughs> I yeah, love and it. And his head, he heard it. He's like, <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> what he wants to, to believe. You. He wanted to see that happen. Never did. Right. I, I, I think it makes sense, though, because otherwise, why else would the robot just wear the, yeah. the ring? Because, yeah. right. you know, it changed her whole outfit except for her ring. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's why? like, I need that back. Yeah. <laughs> hey, <laughs> hey uh, that, that thing on your See, finger. See, that's why I couldn't kill her. He didn't want to get the ring, like, you know, shot in space. He, 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 he wanted put it on the end of the drill. <laughs> okay. Dude, diamonds. dude, it, it might get smudged in space. Yeah, that's okay, what I'm Diamonds yeah. are very strong against being scratched, but they're smashed very easily, okay? <laughs> And yeah. there's one thing that Simon is good at. It's smashing things. Yeah. Dude, yeah. dude that's, 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 that's too much science for, for Grinlog. Yeah, what are you talking about, man? The ring would fight <laughs> Did back. Did you hear my discussion about, you know, components of DNA being yeah. generals? No, no, I know, oh, I know. I'm sorry, girls, but it's friends. <laughs> one moment but, we... <laughs> sorry. No, so, but, but we have to throw logic to the curb. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, who, at least they warn you in the show, like, logic is not a part of this. Like, early on, which first, is awesome. First episode... First episode, yeah. Kamen is like, hey, throw logic to the curb. Do whatever you want. That's the way we roll. Thank you. Because yeah. the writer's like, guys, just don't expect anything but ridiculous. So here you go. Pretty yeah. much. Uh, one moment we have to talk about, because it's so ridiculous, is when Lord Genome hacks the galaxy Digurin. <laughs> oh, and that, my God. <laughs> that weird, like, 3D animation. Oh, my God. I forgot thing. about that. It was, like, Tron, but what? <laughs> yeah, it was very Tron. He was, like, smashing it. Because <laughs> his, his voice is really different there. And then he, like, yep. smashes the box with his head. Yeah, yeah. He, yep. he tries the key and then literally says, I don't need this, throws the key away, smashes his head against the lock, and it opens. Yeah. And then he eats whatever was in the box. Yeah, yeah. yeah. that's like having the key to Crack save everybody be like, nah, and then like headbutt it. <laughs> Cracking the I'm guessing that was not in the show. No. no. Okay. <laughs> that was not. No. Uh, yeah, I just like that that's like the Gynax's idea of how hacking works. Oh, yeah. Is this crappy Isn't looking computer I, program? Yeah, I would say that probably is how it works. <laughs> yeah, digitalize yourself Just and smash we, it with your head. We don't see it like that. We yeah. Don't. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like... Y- y- you don't actually have to like hack your way through firewalls. You just run through them like he did. <laughs> you, you, you spiral energy. Yeah. Of course. And then, like I said earlier, I do like the fact that they accelerate the basically the the, the prep for the final battle because in the, mm-hmm. the show they you know they go back down to earth and there's this whole thing and they just accelerate it by making it all happen on the 
ship. The one moment that is sorely missing that they had in the the TV show is Rossiu's suicide scene where mm-hmm. they literally he punches it through a vortex. Yeah, he he, he, we he discovers we spoiled that for Kenny. <laughs> yeah, oh he, my he God. goes through <laughs> space and time to get to Rossiu, and instead mm-hmm. it's just Rossiu in his office, which still works, but it's not uh-huh. nearly as cool, and you don't get Simone punching him in the face. There, I there, would argue that his girl, uh, Rossiu's girlfriend or love interest, slapping him was more emotionally effective. But yeah, like, yeah, this just wasn't cooler. (laughs) While it was way cooler in the anime, I almost felt a uh, more emotion during the when um, when it it was the the suicide in not not even because of the girlfriend, but the mundaneness of the suicide in the office, because Mm. imagine this people who have died and people who are going to die in this show all die in a really fantastical uh, epic way. Epic way. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Majestic. And then, and then, Rasu was willing to go just very quietly, just mm-hmm. in his office, one yeah. bullet done. I will say, I do like the lighting a lot in that scene because it's got like the blinds and it's yeah. like casting shadows yeah. in the room. And and, 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 and yeah. the, the fact that Simone comes in to stop him, and then you know Rasu's yeah. girlfriend comes in, just. I, I think that worked. Yeah, because I think he even says like, you know, it's good that there's someone here who can punch you. You, you can know, hear, that? hear what? There's a buzz in your line. Oh, them. that's probably your cord. Sometimes they yeah, act I'm, up. I'm getting a little feedback as well. He's also oh. getting it. That's probably. The oh, there same. we go. That's okay. better. Is that better? Yep. Okay. Yep. Sorry about the power that. Power cord. That's good. Okay. But um, Get back live. Uh, in, Simone mentions like you know it's good that you have someone there to punch you you know when you get down you know because c- his girlfriend does it in the uh, in the movie and it, he always flashes back to when Kamina punches in the face which I like because <laughs> it's like completely silent except for the punching sound effect yeah. it's just like Pish! that's so sweet which is so cool um, and then you know then they basically they get the moon out of the super you know, teleporting space, which is always a good thing, you know, because you don't want to leave Earth without the moon. (laughs) That would be bad. You know, and then they go off and go to fight the anti-sprouts, which is kind of cool because in the whole time they're in uh, galaxy Gurren mode, you know, whereas in the show they were in the ship mode, if you recall, Mm -hmm. and they didn't turn into the actual mech until much later, you know, after they got out of the Sea of Despair. So I kind of like that it starts that way. Mm -hmm. Although it does make that moment less impactful because in the show that was the first time you'd seen it, whereas in the movie you've already seen it once before. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, they get into the whole Sea of Despair thing, which is you know pretty much the same as it was in the TV show. You know, obviously they skipped the whole battle before it where all those characters died, you know, which we talked about before. And I actually appreciate that. I actually, yeah, I appreciate it too, honestly. I, I feel like it personally harms some of the timing for me. Like the pacing of the movie is just mm-hmm. so, it feels off to me and it's, it feels like they also go through the beginning a bit too quickly, I, and they seem. Uh, there are parts that seem confusing that I understand because I watched the show, but I don't know that someone who just watched the movie would be able to s- completely understand whatever. There are definitely things that would be confusing because obviously they skip over a lot of the character backstories near the beginning of the show. But you know, both the movies are already close to two hours long. I'm pretty sure, so they mm-hmm. had to cut stuff yeah, out. I understand. Know? And I actually, one thing I actually like about watching the movies is, is like. You know, obviously, like, I have the DVDs. I can marathon through the episodes, you know, like, all 27 in a row if I wanted to. But you still have, like, those the opening and closing and the breaks in between and everything. Whereas in the movie, it's just all cut together. And I actually think it makes it flow a little better, you know, that in that, like, it never stops. Yeah, you know, like you never have recap. To, right. You never have to pause or skip, you know, it never breaks yeah. you out of the narrative. You're just in there the whole time, mm-hmm. you know, which I think makes it even better when you get to the end with the ridiculousness that happens there. You know, you've just been on this two hour long journey to this ultimate climax. <laughs> one, yeah. one ridiculous thing after the next. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I, I'm not a huge fan of um, Sky's not the limit. <laughs> yeah. I'm not a huge fan of. Kita, or I wasn't a huge fan of Kitana as a character until the Sea of Despair stuff mm-hmm. because, you know, him going out like he does, you know, it just makes him What makes me so happy cool. is that his small, at least in the movie, like the smaller version of his um, gunman was the one that pierced through and got it because the first one just got crushed. Yeah. And then he came out like, oh, okay. And then just, and it fate the white, the thing where he's like the stent, like the pencil, just the white. Like, I'm like, yeah, how they switch and, and he, Yeah, and he, he said something along the lines of, oh, so this is what Spiral power really is yeah yeah and then just yeah yeah, that was good he's like it's pretty impressive yeah he's all quiet and then just yeah that the fade away and and he uh borrows the The drill drill. from simone that's right yeah i was gonna say 
Yeah, and I like it because like his line is something like, you know, this is humanity's soul, Simon's soul, humanity's soul. As a matter of fact, it's even my soul. You know, he does that right before he does his Giga Drill Breaker oh. you know, in there. I actually saw a, this is a little bit of a sidetrack, but I saw a video just at some convention and it was Viral's voice actor and like they were reading through the scene with, between when Simon becomes a man, you know, when he does the Giga Drill Breaker for the first time and he, like everyone in the crowd started cheering when Vero, in Vero's voice, he did the Giga Drill Breaker <laughs> yeah. line. It was like, yeah, that's cool. That's awesome. Um, Wait, does, I forget, does um, Vero have a Giga Drill, nope, drill Breaker? No, never does. Oh, okay. Wow. Yeah, Simon's always the one that says it when yeah. they're in Gurren Lagann together. Um, one bit, I it's a small little thing that they add, but you know when um, when they're in the Sea of Despair and Simon is powering like the energy of the whole ship, mm-hmm. pretty much. They add in some scenes of like him in the in the cockpit of Lagann, like with the bloody mist like all yeah. around him, and he's like yeah. really bleeding out. Oh like God. they emphasize that more in the movie, which I really liked. Because yeah. they basically say like he's basically their battery. You know, he's what's powering this whole thing. He's killing himself in there. Yeah, it's yeah. a lot of power for you guys. Pretty much. For you, he died for your yeah. sins, you could say. There's a whole Christ thing. So, you know, and then they get up there in the Galaxy Gurren and start beating up on those weird face things, mm. ship things, you know, which was a cool moment. They speed it up a lot more than they did in the show, which is understandable. I- I'm okay with it. Aside mm-hmm. from everyone dying, that whole thing wasn't really a huge uh, I d- moment, I don't think. In the I, anime, I didn't like the, the the episode previous to the sea thing where like all the characters died and they were just fighting like the huge yeah. army of hands. I didn't like that as much. I did like it when the super galaxy Daiguran showed up and was doing all of its moves, like the probability altering missiles or like yeah. the drills on its fingers. You know that it uses to crush the thing's face. Like seeing that, you know, was cool in the, in the TV show. And they skip over some of that in the movie, but once again, they got to speed it up. So I understand, and I like that. The spot, the anti spiral like shows up and like stops their fight, and it's just like this big rift in space, and he just his head just pokes out, and he like is enormous, like way bigger than the, even the galaxy Daigura. Oh, yeah. And I remember people being uh, saying something along the lines of he looks like such a stupid villain, and oh, then no. and then as as you talk to him and you see just uh, his motivation, he's one of my favorite villains of oh, all yeah, time. Yeah. Oh yeah. Well, I I also thought he was stupid until it gets that bit where you know this this ugliness is the symbol of our determination. You know we mm-hmm. we stopped our own evolution. You know to stop the spiral nemesis like that's our dedication. Like that that's what made it cool. Do for me. do you have that dedication? He yeah. asks to Simone and the humans. Yeah, that's of of the lines in that battle. I love that in the in the TV show because he's like, do you have that sort of dedication? Do you? We say no, 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 not at all. <laughs> yeah, you know because yeah. usually the anti spiral was very monotone, but during the fight, he just starts screaming, and it's great. It's, it's impressive because he's literally 100% different than any other foe they fought because it's just his animation style is so different. When I saw yeah. it, I didn't know. Because the thing is, in that show, how could you top everything they've done? And just that, I was like, what? Because I was expecting <laughs> some giant like space beast, and it was that. And I was like, whoa. It took me a while to get used to, but I liked it a lot, at yeah. least from what I saw. It, it's, I don't know if it's just if they touch this up in the movie or if it's just the fact that the movie version that we have is HD, whereas I've usually watched the TV show on DVD, but the the effects on the anti sparrows body, like, you know, how it's, like, always moving, you know, in that, I don't know what sort of animation that is, but it's a lot more pronounced in the movie than it was in the TV show, which I like a lot, actually. It's a cool little visual And he has thing. his homeworld in his head, so, I mean... Well, yeah, that's that's, that's in the final battle. I'm talking about, like, the just the no, derpy No, I'm just saying, like, one. that was really cool. Mm-hmm. Oh, of course it was. And they fought him on it. <laughs> yes, they I, did. I, I do yeah. like how they changed the final battle. Oh, we'll, we'll yeah. get to it. Anymore, oh my so. God. We're getting to the final battle because that's <laughs> that's the best part. It could Let's be a whole frank. episode, man. <laughs> it could be, but then they, you know, they do the whole thing with the spiral nemesis and like the past of the logons, and you know, they get caught up in the. Um, in the uh, what is it called again? This like the spiral dimension of despair or whatever, you know, where they're all like in the alternate reality. Purgatory. I forget the name that they use, but I do like that they skip over the whole thing with Buta and that because I honestly found it to be kind of dumb in the show. It, it was <laughs> off putting. I didn't. I think I ended up going to the wiki at one point to understand that. <laughs> yeah, because it kind of came out of a little bit. I mean. We saw, you know, that with the backstory that we saw of Lord Genome, that, you know, the armadillo eventually became Guam. So there was some backstory for it, but not really. So I'm glad that they skipped over that. And they kept the, you know, the, the, the alternate reality pretty much the same, except for the things we already talked about. That's, an, like, as far as, like, favorite moments in the show go, obviously you got the final battle. You have Kamina's death, you know, Keaton's death. Another one that I always love is that moment where... 
Kamina shows up again. Because when I was watching the show for the first time, I remember I was like almost crying like tears of joy because it's like <laughs> you didn't think you'd ever see him again. And there mm-hmm. he is. Mm-hmm. You know, I love how he's like, you know, choose which comment you want. You know, and he's like, you know, my, you know, my drill is my soul. You know, my drill is the drill that will pierce the heavens as he's beating the crap out of the, you know, loser Kamina. Which was awesome. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So the visuals of all that were great. You know, you get that, the cool bit of him flying and Gurren, you know, and that's what triggers everyone else to go away. Um, obviously, they have some characters alive that they did in the TV show. and. One of my favorite little things that they added is the twins are with all those babies, like the kids, like playing, <laughs> and then they disappear, and like the babies all like just go in midair. I thought that was adorable. So that was all cool, and then they they add a little bit with um, Nia and the Anti Spiral, where like they're talking, and there's just like the shot like going through like this tunnel thing, and it shows like the the green lights of like all the Daiguran members like heading towards, and he, when she's like saying like, oh no, he'll come, you know, Simon will come. You know, and then it goes goes from that like into the ring that starts the flash and everything, you know, which was obviously epic. I actually, as much as I like Liberia Me from Hell, which is the opera <laughs> version of Roro Fight the Power, because that's what they used during that moment in the TV show when the Tengen Topa Gurren Lagann is being made. You know, and they all come out of the the Gurren Lagann, you know, with the drills and everything when he saves Nia's life. Um, they change it to the Tenmo Tusuke thing again in the movie which I actually think I like better. One, because we just heard Liberia Me from Hell through the whole like alternate reality thing. And two, it just it hits all the beats perfectly, like where the music mm-hmm. climaxes is where you know the Tengen Topa Gurren Lagann comes out of the yeah, like that. ground like and that. all that. The, the soundtrack is one of the best parts of oh Gurren Lagann. I love oh, it makes the it soundtrack. Out, yeah. It's just... Yeah, it's so good. Terrific. You know, and so I love all that. You know, I like the fact that they, you know, they get that shot of all the drills landing in the ground, you know, in that row, like leading from the anti spiral to the Gurren Lagann. And they like show like the characters who are alive in the TV show. And then it pans out further to like everyone who's alive in the movie, mm-hmm. you know, it makes it even look even cooler than it did before. And then we get at last to the final battle, big boom oh explosions, which was, it's pretty much the same as the TV show up until, well, actually I say it's the same. It's the same up until he's talking with <clears throat> Simone and he basically says like you realize that Nia is going to die if we die. You know, he reveals that to him and they mm-hmm. all are like, "What?" You know, which didn't happen in the TV show. Yeah. And I don't know, it it ruins the surprise a little mm-hmm. bit, but it's you sort of knew it was coming in the TV show anyways because they foreshadowed it. Yeah. So Yeah, I, I liked them just foreshadowing it and try and you know, showing Simone accepting it, just knowing and accepting it at the end. I'm not super fond of uh I'm not super fond of how um how they did it in the show just telling them and spoiling it. Yeah. yeah it does spoil this. I don't know how I feel about it cuz it does spoil the surprise but at the same time it, it almost reinforces the INT surprise argument a bit cuz he's like you put in all this effort to save this artificial life form that's going to die if you kill us, you know, like that makes yeah. no logical sense and Screw they do logic. It. It, exactly. It's, it, it's more bo- it's more boring the way that they did it in the movie, but at the same time, it does push home the... Mm-hmm. Uh, it lands total, better. The, the total despair. Because yeah. the whole point of them is the reason why they don't uh, go up and beyond the power of Simone mm-hmm. is because they want to fight Simone on an equal level and mm-hmm. beat him to mm-hmm. uh, make just. him feel mm-hmm. ultimate despair. And so I think just uh, telling him, hey, your girlfriend, like your to-be wife... Yeah, she's going to die no matter what. Sorry. Yeah. No, the five things to say about it. Well, I think that's something that they show because when they turn into the Super Tengen Topa Gurren Lagann, he just turns into an equally sized yeah. new version of himself like in an instant. So the yeah. Andy Sparrows in the TV show could have done that at any point and just squashed the Tengen Topa Gurren Lagann oh and been done God. with it. But they're honorable about but, it. Well, they're not honorable, but it's like I think it, I agree with what Mark said. It's sort of like where they want to be just better than you. So like you have hope and then it gets crushed. They take it away from you. They mm-hmm. take it from you at every turn. Yeah, it's kind of no like a killjoy what. thing. Yeah. 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 So, but see, that's why I like the fact that he got to fight it like hand to hand combat at the end, which oh, was. Yeah. Then they're truly was fighting so on good. an equal and, plane. And, and yes, so and literally. Yeah. And, well, and actually, right before that, there was the whole change with uh, usually they do, which was my favorite part in the anime, where um, they do the drill. Uh, basically, each they each uh, get their own drills and they clash, oh, and then they the, break, uh, yeah, and then they oh. clash and break and clash and break, and they do that, like, they cut to that, um, like, almost ten times, and then 
uh, they do a whole nother monologue. But instead, in the movie, what it is, is they each do their own Giga Joe Breaker, Which hit, e- hit each other, collide, and they basically make the universe implode on itself mm-hmm. and then recreate new recreate galaxies. Recreate the entire galaxy of everything as yeah. they were before like i i don't understand well, how it works but i think the way it's explained because they say we're in a super spiral universe where thought is given form like that's why lord genome has a body yeah so that's the universe they were fighting in it's not the actual universe oh so it's not yeah. the entire universe but just that pocket universe or galaxy or yeah, whatever and right. one thing i think you guys told me in the show that was different i like the fact that when they when they got freaking destroyed in the beginning, they all split into their own version mm-hmm. of like yeah. super. That's all new. That yeah. was awesome. Because when yeah. they did that, they were some sweet forms. They had some sweet yeah, forms. Yeah. And it's, I mean, for someone who's watching the TV show, like it's got to be kind of surprising when you see the anti spiral start ripping the Tengen Topa mm-hmm. Gurren Lagann apart oh, and like God. into all those little pieces. And that th- hurt, there was man. actually blood. Yeah. Oh, that yeah. Hurt. Lots of blood. Yeah, but uh, it is cool to see all those um, different versions. The, the fights with all those that I actually like the most are Nia's and the uh, Gropperls, mm-hmm. just for the animation, because like both of them are like zooming along his arms like, yeah. as he's, they're fighting him, and the animation is like, really fluid and beautiful. Viral was my favorite, because he gets six arms and just does the sword thing. Yes, that... But- and then one thing you guys warned me about, but I just was not ready for it. Like, literally, the way Mark broke me to the series, before I started watching it, he's like, I'll give you one hint to just get you excited. Galaxy Shurikens. I won't say anything oh more. My and god, actually, yeah. I was waiting the whole time to see that. <laughs> and when shurikens. I saw it, oh my god. Yeah. He literally threw we Galaxy at him. him. <laughs> what? Like, when that happened, I was like, you and, cannot get better And the than best that. part is, you thought that was the, the, the yeah, top. The, the I know, top. but yeah. then he was like, no. And he had a celestial cape. That was the best part. Yeah, no, but he went to the super form. Oh, there was yeah. a cape. That's not even my well, final form. Yeah. yeah. Well, and I also love how, you know, of course, Yoko's machine you know her mech has the to have the, the missile boobs because oh, oh, that's yeah. a thing <laughs> that was <laughs> awesome though <laughs> nothing wrong with that of course they not. were like shark shark and, missiles but, that's I, the point that's why she should go to the team girl and they uh, need her for that and if i remember right the anti spiral is throwing galaxies and they cut through the missiles cool. like ninja stars yeah mm-hmm. which is so cool like that alone and they stuck into other galaxies i was like how yeah. many billions of species di- you know who cares this they, is awesome they create the big bang man i mean that's true they're geez. fighting on a galaxy that's what i like to the whole time they were on a galaxy yeah. And I also love when um, when they all of them have basically have shown themselves like even the the giant one that looks like the um oh uh, you know the big ship you know shows up and like he, Simon gives some other epic speech and they all say you know like who the hell do you think we are and it pans out to them and then this j- volcano just appears and erupts yeah, behind them yeah, like yeah. about a, that a universe sized volcano <laughs> oh is my just God. there in space the celestial <laughs> volcano I think literally they're fighting in the final destination of their universe that's the only way to equate it to pretty mm-hmm. much I also like they make a small change to the anti spirals um infinity big bang storm because in the in the movie you see like the the shockwave that's going on behind it, there are galaxies like forming from this attack, like just shooting off into space. Yeah. That wasn't in the TV show, and it's a nice little addition. Just green um, galaxies, you know. What the, uh, as the I was, dwarfs and stuff. Yeah. What, as I was writing my list, I was thinking about this. Um because in both the TV show and the movie, you know, Lord Genome go, goes into the Zengun and sacrifices himself, you know, to save him. But in the TV sh- or in the movie where everyone has their own mechs why didn't Lord Genome use his mech when everyone else was fighting, you know, in their own things? Like, he's not in that little section of the fight at all. Yeah, that's true. Which seems a little I odd. Think, hmm. I think the whole point of that was maybe he was saving all his energy to make himself come back uh, at that one part where he sacrifices himself. Hmm. I guess. And I, I think it was that. And also, this was, like, you know, Team Gurren fighting, you know, all of them. And Lord Genome sort of is a member of T. Gurren, but, but sort of not. not. Really. So that awkward I, extra member who kind of like was like an, an overlord for a while. An appendix. Yeah. Well, I agree with you, Mark. I actually really like Lord Genome and how he changes in the second half, like how he's like, do not grieve for me, you know, daughter. I used to, my soul mm-hmm. drowned in a sea of weariness, but has been reawakened. Yeah. You know, the, that he's changed enough to sacrifice himself for them, you mm-hmm. know, there at the end is so cool. And I, Every time I watch the show, I always laugh when his head is on the tip of the drill. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. so stupid. <laughs> That's the best. Just the, he makes the dumbest face. <laughs> it, 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 it is really like the concept of that is really stupid. But for some reason, just because of how ridiculous everything is, it fit. Yeah. Why not? Yeah, yeah. Sure. why not? Just yeah. add it. <laughs> and obviously, like I say, like my favorite moment in all these movies is the final battle. Like just the whole thing. But I have to go to a single moment within it. It's it's got to be when he takes the drill, you know, the green light shoots out in all of them. And he's like, guys, let's do it. Do what? What else? 
combine, you know, and you see them all oh. go together and form That's the tight. Super Tengen Topa. And it's like, oh my yeah. God. Because that was where, like, you know, Kenny had been freaking out, like, throughout the, this whole final battle, but that was the moment. Yeah. Here it comes, and you I, got any your other hand. I would have laid down and just passed out a coma, but I couldn't. Aspire and you kept me going. Actually, because I, I invited Jorge, you know, to come to this, yeah. and I told him, like, they, they add a lot to the final battle and make it I even, could not believe even more ridiculous, and he couldn't believe it. I was like, and then it got to that moment, and you were like, holy shit, dude, <laughs> this is so great. <laughs> like, every, honestly, I think. Oh, watching God. like both the movies was great, but especially the second one near the mm-hmm. end, like that's one of the funnest experiences I've ever had watching a movie. Just because the energy in the room was so palpable, everyone oh, was freaking out. Yeah, yeah. Like, we were all fucking pretty much. Like you know, it was so energetic, and everyone was like getting so invested in that moment at, when it turned into the second Dover Guren. You could you could almost believe that spiral energy was a thing it because was. you could literally feel the energy in the room. Well, Mark, I'm sure your neighbors thought spiral energy was a thing. Yeah. After we started yelling, they were like, "Yeah." If they survive, because it was like <laughs> near exactly. midnight too. <laughs> we so. we we just we just peek over into their window and like you see a huge <laughs> hole, just a drill, drill sized. The cops hole. are just like, <laughs> no, <laughs> I'm not dealing with this. I'm not dealing with this. That's right. Well, I remember we went like we went on our little ticket swimming outing afterwards, and like we oh, were constantly yes. quoting like Giga Drill Breaker, like all these things were going log it afterwards. Like, yeah, I'm mean, trying to make a drill out of uh, those uh, noodles. Didn't work as well as I hoped. <laughs> not as well. Oh, as and I I tried to make a uh, Tengen Topa uh, Mark, and it's just, <laughs> I, 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 we ma- combined. I, oh, oh, Kenny and I combined, but then also I. I try to um, attach like ten different noodles all around me and become a robot. It kind of didn't worked. quite work, but it was still funny. <laughs> it was close. Yeah. Would have cut it for the Borg. So yeah, you know. Then we get they start fighting, you know, and you get. I love it because he does the, you know, I I I do like the drill, like the drill, 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 drill bit in the show. But the yeah, fact that bit. I think it's even better in that we get. A Giga Joe Breaker, because that was yeah. the finishing move throughout the entire show, and to get that with mm-hmm. Super Deg and Doba Grand that is true. And then for the the anti spiral is even like just I think he says like interesting. He's like, well then, oh, I guess I'll do it too. And you know. correct me if I'm wrong, but he says like anti spiral, a Giga Drill, a Breaker, like oh, yeah. all that. He does it too. Yep. I yeah. also love that they cycle through every <laughs> mech that makes up the Tengen Topa Girl. Right, yeah. like five, four or five yeah, different ones. Yeah, because this is all the way down mechs. to Lagon just coming out of his forehead, and then. Yeah, well, that's the part I love because it does that zoom out to you know the universe like everything imploding on the one point, and it, like the music like because they've been playing Serario days throughout all this the opening and like goes like this like where the music like quiets down a lot and it zooms in and like the guitar starts going and it's drilling mm-hmm. through all of the lot the Gurren Lagans down to Gurren Lagan, which of course stops it even though. The Gurren Lagann compared to the giant anti spiral is so yeah. ridiculously it's like so small, man. Small. It's, it's, it's it makes no sense. Building but. sides fighting something bigger than universes. Yep. I mean that's happened before. Of course. And then that's one of my favorite moments, like yours, Mark, is when Simon gives that speech, the dreams of the past, the hopes of the future, yeah. you know, those two sets of dreams weave into a double helix, driving towards tomorrow, and that's Tang and Toba. That's Gurren Lagan. Well, yeah, my drill's the drill that creates the heavens. <laughs> like, no. just one of the most inspiring quotes of all time. Oh, yeah. Ever. You know, and that's, in the TV show, you know, that's where, like, in the TV show, all the mechs, like, start going out and getting hit and down to Lagan, Gurren Lagan. whereas in this, it's just Lagan basically going off and going towards the the planet of the anti spell as all those things are shooting out at it. And I like in the in the uh, movie they added elements of Lagan that we never see in the TV show and that it's actually kind of sentient because remember it grabs Simone as it's being destroyed and throws him at the anti-spiral and mm-hmm. he says like mm-hmm. Lagan, you know, like question mark. So it's like Lagan did it on its own, mm-hmm. you know, which is kind of a cool thing. And then fist fight. Yeah, cause I, which is a great comparison to when uh, Lord Genome is just punching the utter crud out of Simone towards the end of the first act. Yeah. It's now Simone's fighting back with yeah. his fist. I just love that, like, this is literally, like, the two most powerful beings in the universe, you know, fighting for the, the survival of the galaxy. And how do they, you know, finish it up with a fist fight? Fist fight, yeah. Back to basics, man. Yeah, which, dude, come on. It's. Like one of my favorite it's a fights. Game. One of my favorite like fist fight things in all of anime is the climax of the Cowboy Bebop movie, the fight between Spike and yeah. Vincent, which is like super fluid and like this awesome kung fu action thing. And this is very different in that it's like not fluid and fast; it's slow and just really like forceful. Like they give you time with like each punch and the blood. Because they're massive. Out. Like their arms are like 
galaxy. Well, I mean, I mean the the fist fight on the planet itself oh, 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 between yeah, yeah. the anti spiral and Simon. Like oh, they, they say okay. their arms are galaxy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh my god. Because <laughs> like you know, it's like, awesome. It's like. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and yeah, it's, it's like using a power hit. Yeah, it's like a lot slower, but it still works really well. Cause I'm like gonna send an email to a guy next now. Yeah, you you see the blood spurting out to the point where it's like a cloud of mist around them, the blood that they've <laughs> lost. And then Simon is like, you know, you know, my drill is my soul. Drill arm, you know, goes through the anti spiral. Mm. He makes Giga a drill, drill basically out of the blood around him. Yes, yeah. Giga blood drill. I I because I remember blood like mage. Like, I remember, Kenny, because you, obviously, like, the Super Tengen Topo Gurnlaga, like, took you over the moon as far as, like, you know, ridiculousness goes. And then the fist fight was happening, and everyone was happy. And then he gets the drill, and I think you were just like, what? what? <laughs> yeah, the fact that he, no matter what form he is, he has a drill. He will, no matter what, have a drill to destroy you. So, I mean, the thing should have seen that coming. I'm like, well, I should have seen that. Yeah. <laughs> and then just, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so then you know it, it explodes, and as I pointed out before, the explosion, the, they change the sound effect in the movie and make it more muffled sounding, which I don't like as much, but it's a very little nitpick. And then, you know, they have the ending, and they add a couple things that I think make the ending work a lot better than it did in the TV show, because you get Nia finishing up that whole arc with her writing the note to Kamina with her, you know, writing the note to Kamina, like, basically talking about, like, everything that had happened, like, I'm going to marry Simone today, you know? And then I think it's pretty powerful that she gives it to Yoko and Yoko says something like why why don't you give this to Simon and he's like she's like uh we've already everything that we need to say you know he already knows or like it's between it's in our hearts or something like that mm-hmm. like basically she doesn't need to talk to Simon because he already knows everything she feels about him yep mm-hmm. and you while she's saying that it cuts to a shot of Simon that I really love it's him in that white tux uniform mm-hmm. and he puts his hand on Laga and like lets it drop oh. and in context of the ending it's like that's the last time he ever you know, does anything with Lagan, who's been like his partner throughout this entire series of events. It's like, oh, it's so sad. <laughs> and then you get, you know, the wedding, which is pretty much the same, and the ring disappears and Nia disappears. It does seem sort of strange that they're all still so surprised, even though the anti spiral told them point blank, like mm-hmm. Nia's gonna die. They still don't I, believe it. I think they're surprised because uh, of when, what was it, Gibby goes like, well, why don't you save them? Why don't you bring them back? I don't understand. Yeah. You know, I also love with the whole moving forward concept, how Simon gives the drill to, you know, Gimme. And he's like, you know, I'm just Simon the digger. There are, there are better people to dig down the holes that I dug. You know, like this whole idea of passing it on to the future generation, always mm-hmm. looking forward. Like, I love that aspect of the show. Because I know a lot of people aren't that hot on the Gurren ending because it's this huge hopeful thing. And then it has this pretty downer ending at the very like last five minutes. I love it. Yeah. But I think it actually works a lot because you expect like the, it, yeah. the happy ending and they don't give it to you. And it actually brings a big dramatic turn, which I actually like a lot. Yeah. It's got great impact. Oh yeah. I mean, I always have feels when I watch that ending. Oh yeah. yeah. It lands better that way, I think. Yeah. And then it, it also adds a scene with, with the epilogue, like it cuts out a lot of the stuff, like with Liron and Rossiu and you know Yoko, and like all that is cut out and just sort of set in that little radio broadcast thing. But they add a scene of Simon digging for water in a random town, and the old man is like, "How can we ever rep- repay you?" And he's like, "Plant flowers, plant flowers." That that hurt stead. me because yeah. I did not know that. Yeah. I I did not see that um, at all. So when that came out in the movie at the very end, I just kind of sat there for a second and I'm like. Oh, <laughs> oh, no. oh, that's sad. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I like it because it gives purpose to what, like, you know, you just assume Simon's sort of this hermit traveling around the world, but it's like he's fulfilling Nia's mm-hmm. dream for her. And you even see he's got the ring, like, on a necklace, like, mm-hmm. around his, mm-hmm. on his chest, and it's like, oh. He's the and, walking and, feels, man. And he still oh my has God, the yeah. spiral in his eyes. Yeah. I've yeah. always thought of him as sort of a Gandalf at that point, just walking around helping people. Yeah, he's even got, he's got the reason. staff with the drill on it and Gandalf everything. Gandalf the spiral. <laughs> <laughs> mm, yeah, yeah. and then you know you get that cool scene with him helping the little kid drill the hole in the mm-hmm. coconut or whatever and like you always say Mark it is really powerful for me when he's like uh, you're awesome mister of course if I am just who the hell do you think I am and then he just like drinks the coconut and he's like hmm well I guess I'm nobody like for the guy that could that have been hurt. the leader of the entire world like he very easily could have been the leader but he gave it to Rossi you know the fact that no one knows who he more. is you know it's it's sad, but also kind of cool. I, I yeah. think another part of it is that he doesn't really care. It's more I helped humanity. Yeah, he I br- did what he wanted. I, I brought us here. 
my part is done. Now it's time to let the next generation yeah. take my over. job here is done. Yeah. Like we saw it earlier in the show when he when he thought like it was right to depose him and he thought he was passing the torch onto Rossi. Like he was okay with being locked up in jail and dying because he thought like I've done all I can. You know, it's up to Rossi now. Now it's like I've saved the universe. You know, I saved Nia. Now it's up to the next generation of people, which I really like. You know, and you get that awesome shot of the Gurren Logans going up, making the spiral, and he's like, you know, oh, they're because the, the lights in the sky are stars, you know, where our spiral cousins are waiting for us. You know, that shot of the Gurren Logan going straight up from oh, the drill. And he was saying how uh, that's this this voyage is not for war, it's for peace. Mm-hmm. And it's one of the first times in the entire show where something is solely focused on <laughs> peace. peace and not just Rather than epic destroy. battles and destroy, destroy, yeah. Yeah, destroying Manly things. Tears. And the name of the, the movie, The Lights in the Skies Are Stars, is obviously a reference to that. And also the music that plays during that last scene is called The Lights in the Skies Are Stars. And if you listen to it, it's the, the Tenwo Tusuke thing that I talked about earlier, which is like the dun, 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 you know, that whole bit. If you listen to that, the, the piano music that plays at the very end, it's a slower piano version yeah. of that. And they did that they basically take the most hopeful music in the show that was like used at all these epic moments and just slow it down. Make it darker. And make it the sad thing at the very end. It's, oh man. Melancholy. When I learned that, I was like feeling the feels Hit real bad. Tears, very, tears. very manly tears. Tears forever. Mm-hmm. Yeah, manly tears. <laughs> and then they actually do something really cool in the credits I like because most of it is just like Simone, you know, doing this walk cycle thing. And they have this thing where Nia's little flower pops up, like is with him, like going in front of him for a while. And then it blows up, like it disappears. Mm-hmm. And then uh, Buta digs something out of the ground and he reaches out and grabs it and brings it up. And it's the Gurren Lagan like cape. Oh and, my God. and he puts it over his shoulders and stands back up. And he's gone from the kid Simone to adult Simone. And I wanted to find a gif of that so bad. I couldn't find it anywhere online because I just think that's such a cool little visual transition. Mm -hmm. So awesome. So there we are. You know, we've gotten through all the movies. So uh, what's everyone's final thoughts, you know, on the movies? Like, would you say, like, this is the definitive version of Gurren Lagann, you know, over the TV show? Because personally, I say, like, the TV show gives you a lot more backstory and stuff, mm-hmm. and there's things that would be confusing if you just watched the movies. But at the same time, the stuff that it adds with the mm-hmm. ending of the first movie, and especially the ending to the second one, like you have, you have not had the the complete Gurren Lagann experience unless Without you've seen the two movies. I agree. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Without a doubt, for me. Yeah. Kenny. Yeah, I mean, they both need each other to survive. So I'd almost say there's no definitive version one or the other because without either, you're missing out on so much of the series. The backstory or with the new stuff they added in because the movie has, like you said, stuff you can't skip without. So honestly, yeah. I haven't even finished the series, so I can't say one without the other. They're kind of mm-hmm. like, you know, they need each other. Good compliment. Because yeah, you need to watch the TV show. Isn't yeah. Right yeah. I know, but hey, I've, I, before I even heard of the series, really, I voted for you to be number one anime on the list. Well, so. well, I believe that was actually the day where you're like, guys, I got to watch Grand Lock. And I started we, watching we made it. made it our yeah. number one and show. I would say, honestly, with my favorite animes, that'd be in the top five, the best things I've ever seen. Just the over the top epic message it has. Just do whatever the hell you want because nobody can stop you. <laughs> well, it's uh, believe in yourself and do whatever you want, you know, to help save humanity you know it's like that do, do whatever you want and fire. yeah go kill well, people i know i'm just saying this whatever you have in mind as long as it's for like good in their mind like you can don't yeah. nothing can stop you just don't betray the spiral energy exactly yeah yep. yeah i think the big message is basically just like this idea that <laughs> no matter what obstacle gets in simon's way like he through. can overcome it and you get that in every shonen show like goku and dragon ball z and mm-hmm. everything but it's something about the way they do it in gurren Lagann with the spiral energy and just the energy and the animation and simon's epic speeches like all of that combined just makes it so much more inspirational i think than any other show yeah, yeah. definitely well, the hell do i think we are indeed yeah. jorge well, they, yeah, well uh, I agree. I think the, the best thing that one could do now is like just get the whole bundle. I was just checking it out, like the Blu-rays with all the TV shows. It's like a uh, hundred some dollars. It's a lot. It's worth every penny. Yeah. But well, yeah, they, they, they need each other. I agree. It's like the whole, like when you told me that it was going to be more than what I've seen in the show, I was like, no, no way. This dude's full of it. And then I just, <laughs> I didn't, didn't believe my head. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I, I sort of did. But yeah. And then when I saw it, man, I was like... Yeah. Jesus. Well, and what's cool is like, like I said, both movies are on 
iTunes for 13 bucks each. And obviously, like having them for the new footage is great. But even though I own the show on DVD, number one, seeing it subbed is cool because I like the dub better. But the sub is still amazing. Like you can't go wrong mm-hmm. either way with it in my mind. And number two, uh, seeing just even the stuff that they didn't change, but it's in HD. Wow. It, it looks a lot better in HD than That's it does beautiful. on DVD. Oh, yeah. So it's totally worth buying. <laughs> yeah. uh, Peter. Uh, I would... I loved the first movie. I wasn't quite as fond of the second movie until the very ending when, of course, all of the great additions that, are being added. That's interesting because, like, honestly, the second movie is my preferred one because it changes a lot more, whereas the first one was pretty much the same except for the very beginning and the very ending. Yeah, I I don't know. It it just frustrates me. Uh, I felt the first movie did a much job, better job of introducing new people to the show, <laughs> whereas the second movie, I felt, left a lot of things that were confusing and i felt the pacing in the beginning was a bit off uh i would very much agree with kenny uh you need both and i would highly recommend seeing the first before you see the show before you see the movie because not only does that allow you to go even further down the i can never watch an action sequence again and feel quite (laughs) the same way but also i i feel like going into the movies with all the backstory really helps i would say that's true because you know kenny you probably don't understand a lot of little things that happen there, minor characters and stuff, because you haven't seen the TV show. Yeah, no, I don't know the backstories as much. I'm going to do it, guys. Don't worry. I'll get to it. Good. You said that Catch last you. year, Kenny. Hey, Ooh. I'm just waiting. I'm getting a little like, incubation time. <laughs> Still up. Incubator? Like Cubay? What do they even know? You said incubation. Incubator. You're the worst. <laughs> <laughs> I must bring Cubay into everything. Uh, Mark. I would say that while I love the anime uh, and it gives all the background and it's still amazing. The movies I loved even more just because watching them all in a four hour period, mm-hmm. watching basically Gurren Lagann from the beginning to end. And the, the reason why I, I like the movies uh, just as much is because it, it gets that feeling of the reason why I watch Gurren Lagann is because of the inspirational uh, message and the fiery spirit it gives you. And the movies do that perfectly and then actually go one step above because of all the little additions. So I would say that you can watch both movies back to back and still get the Gurren Login Login experience. If you want the little background stuff and you want to get even more into it, I say go to the movie. But um, You mean the TV show? Or not, sorry. Wow, yeah. Uh, the TV show. But uh, watching both movies, like I'd say you're pretty good. Yeah. I think it's telling that like I was talking about this 30 day anime challenge thing I've been doing on Tumblr and like basically it's just like 30 questions for each day or 30 questions Whoa. total. <laughs> oh my god. One, one a day, sorry. Yeah. And some of them are like hard like who's your favorite supporting female character, male character in anime and you got to like think about them. One that was recent was most epic scene in any anime. It was like easy, you know, final <laughs> fight from <laughs> Gurren Lagann, the lights in the sky are stars. Like, there's yeah. nothing more epic than that, like, yeah. True. anywhere in my mind. So, <sighs> all right. Well, this has been a fun episode. You know, I, I, like I said, we did a Gurren Lagann podcast, like, way back in the day, but that was, like, episode two, and, you know, we weren't fully into the podcast and groove yet, and I think, like, this discussion really helped us, you know, get into some you nice You could say we had our time it. skip and gotten better. Yes. Oh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. So it's like the seven-year time skip in Gurren Lagann. <laughs> oh, tie-in. Indeed. And um, I feel old now. <laughs> for those of you who have been listening to us, uh, next week we'll be doing a podcast on Nietzsche Joe, Woo! which we've been talking about for a while. And I, I watched the whole series over the summer. Funniest anime probably I've ever seen. Ever. Really looking forward to talking about that. Um, you said you were planning on watching it, right, Mark? Yes, I will be. That's going to be awesome. Um, for those of you who have enjoyed this podcast, you can email us at techheads at avwproductions.com. Please you can do. follow us on Twitter at techheadsou. You can like us on Facebook, uh, subscribe to us on iTunes, give us some ratings, reviews. You know, we always like seeing that. Uh, we're AVW Media on iTunes. We have a blog page called techheads.me. You can check out all of our content on all those different things. Um, and I want to thank all of you out there li- for listening and also to all of you here for being co-hosts with me, especially Jorge and Peter, you know, make new members. I hope you enjoyed being on the podcast. It was a pleasure, man. All right. Mm -hmm. And uh, do we have any good quote to sign out on this podcast? Oh, let's hear it, Kenny. See you around, buddy. (laughs) Later, buddy. Later, buddy. There you go. (laughs) All right. See you next time. Bye, guys. Later, buddy. This product is copyright AVW Productions 2013.